All right, and we are live. Welcome back, everyone, to the MMT Macro Trader live stream. Another week, man. Another week Thanks. in the books. Welcome, Bijou. Glad you can join Thank me. You. As always, welcome, chat. Uh, as you can see on screen from the live screen, uh, the live stream, it, uh, the chat disconnected and then reconnected. So <laughs> I'm a little curious, chat, if oh, you no. can actually talk to me right now as i'm seeing as we're going uh, live yeah. hopefully that's not too much of a distraction but uh um I, I put one in did you see that it didn't pop up all right chat I, I apologize if you're saying hi right now uh that means i can't see it but give me one second while we get while we get underway i just realized that is yeah. taking place um i'm going to go ahead and reset that but anyway welcome everyone another uh another exciting week of uh mmt economic yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the line is that I'm trying to get at, but uh, we've had a, a, another great week in the world of MMT and just a lot to cover during yeah. this week's uh, during this week's live stream. So yeah, Bijou, how was your week, man? It's all right. Uh, yeah, it's been all right. Got a bit sidetracked with the AI stuff again. It's <laughs> like, it's like I kind of want this wave to be a bit over and then we <laughs> should go on to other things. Uh, discovered the Mojo language. I don't, I don't keep up all the time with my, uh, you know, hacker community stuff these days, but um, every now and again, I sort of go back and dip in or whatever. So there's a new version of sort of Python, but it's compiled. And it's like, you know, so, sometimes you can get 3,000 times speed up, basically like C++ or something. So I was, I was looking forward to that. And then it was like, oh, no, it's like it's still in development and they haven't released it. So you, you have to sort of do the you know, sign up for to be able to trial and so forth. But it was really cool. It's like in future we'll be able to run most of our Python code, uh, but uh, ultra fast, <laughs> which is good for simulations. You know, for the, for the um, for your neural networks, if you're running on the GPU, it's it's often using back back end compiled code anyway, so it doesn't matter. But but it will it will matter for other little like, okay. apps that you, okay. if we want to develop and so forth. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, what else? Explain other, other stuff will come up as we yeah. Go. But I, I guess explain to me what the difference is between compiled and yeah, like uh, compared to like what what I'm doing in my Jupyter notebooks versus a compiled. Right. Yeah, I, I guess explain the difference. Yeah, compiled and interpreted. So an interpreted language, um, you write the code and you can run it immediately um, because there's something called an interpreter, and it it just converts your code. Uh, you know, in, in real time into machine instructions. Okay. Um, and with Python, is a th I think with a, with a lot of languages, there's like a layer where you uh, get it down to a sort of Python byte code, which can, which is, you know, runs a lot faster. And, but uh, it's still a bit slower. It's, it's a lot slower, you know, than compiled languages. So compiled languages, you write the code, it may go through some intermediate thing when you compile it, but but it ultimately goes down down to machine code, and then and then you run it after it's all down into machine code. Whereas Python, it's it's sort of doing it on the fly, so it's more dynamic. Okay, which gives Python a lot of power and any interpreted languages power because you know you can write notebooks that that you just write a bit of code and it's still got all the rest of the code in memory, you know, and that's how you can run a notebook. You could you couldn't really do that. You couldn't do Jupyter notebooks with a um, interpreted language. Oh, with a, sorry, okay. with a compiled yeah. language because yeah. you'd have to compile the whole notebook every time, which takes a while. It would it'd slow it down a bit. Okay, but but when you compile it, it runs real fast, right? So Mojo is like you can use Python and and a few extra Mojo bits and pieces that um yeah they they just compile the whole thing down to machine code and then it and then it runs real fast so if you've got a whole if you've got a program that you basically have written and finished finished sort of writing the program yeah yeah that's when you that's when you want to use compilers yep or just when you want we or just when you have to have speed that's good nice uh anyway maybe next year that'll be ready for public open source release uh, that was that was helpful because it's allowing me to fix everything on the stream yeah. right now. So that was good. Okay, yeah. I can see everything correctly got, again. I can see Josh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we hi, can Josh. See it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Welcome, Josh. Anyone else? Say hi in the chat if you're here. 
Uh, it's not updating my concurrent viewers, and usually we've got Josh, um, eight to ten people by now, so it's not showing me that. But I'm sure you guys are here, so say hi in uh, the chat if you uh, if you're making it in. Um, so Josh, Josh was asked a good question last week that was right yeah, at the, right at the end. yeah. You remember that geothermal energy? I remember him asking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I had a, had a look into that because you know I'd I'd read some stuff on geothermal in the past. It's a good, good question. I had a look at that write up. So, if you combine the uh, New Zealand uh, science technology with the cleaning the pipes to get all the, the you know, mineral crud buildup, um, you, you get a max, you get a huge amount of efficiency out of that. And then, if you have the uh, the company that Josh uh, linked us to, uh, what are they called? Evar, Evar or something. They are doing deep, deep drilling for the geothermal really deep so okay. you, so the idea is that eventually you'll be able to drill anywhere in the world you won't have to be in uh iceland or new zealand or Cal or you know california you could you could almost do it sort of from anywhere uh but then the thing that kind of got me is i always knew geothermal was this you know abundant resource that could that had potential to power you know cities and so forth but this article that that I got to, uh, they were claiming that basically, you know, there's geothermal for our current needs for as long as we'd like. It's like, it could be a hundred percent geothermal, which is quite amazing. But then when you think the temperature, the inner earth's core is, is about the same as the sun, um, you kind of think, oh yeah, so that maybe, that maybe isn't okay. The okay. Wild. If, you, if you get far enough down, it seems like yeah, if you get far enough down, you don't, I mean, obviously, they're only scratching the surface, really, for geothermal. Yeah. yeah. If you actually drill right down, you, well, a you wouldn't, wouldn't, you'd never be able to do it because it would always collapse. But that's the amazing thing is how they could drill so far down because they really, if you don't have an actual surface vent, you really have to drill a hell of a long way down. It's like how do they, how do they stop the whole thing collapsing and all that? This anyway, is gonna, this is gonna be a really amazing. dumb. This is gonna be a really dumb question. But if yeah, I if I what? dig if I dig you know three feet underground or whatever right it's it's cool right. it's cooler than it is on the ground temperature yeah, right that's right how, how far yeah. do you have to how far do you have to dig down before you actually start getting warmer than it's a good question <laughs> ask a miner I think it's about a, a kilometer or a mile, a mile down okay it's real hot yeah. okay okay so it's not too it's really not too deep in the grand scheme of things oh no the thermal but the geothermal you have to dig hell of a long way down i don't know how long it's like really really you have to go okay go pretty pretty deep then you have to drill another hole as an injection to put in the water um back back into the earth so you have a extraction and then an injection a, a, a wee way away from that okay not at the same not quite at the same site so apparently this company is is you know promising to be able to do all this which is which would be incredible It'd be like, you know, endless source of energy that, that would actually, you know, fit, fit current needs. Also, while I was looking at that, I saw that new, little New Zealand here. We're like, we're like in the top um, gigawatt club for, uh, for geothermal. It's like a, there's only six countries that have that. And uh, Iceland is, is not yet in that club. So, so we're, we're doing better than Iceland on geothermal, which was a bit surprising. But it's great for New Zealand. Like we've got hydro, electric, and now the potential for geothermal for all of our future energy needs. So if we can convert that into, you know, split, splitting water and do and go to hydrogen fuel cells and all that. I don't know, man. It's like who needs fossil fuel anymore in New Zealand? It's like except for pharmaceuticals and, you know, the the oil products. So Ah, yeah, it's good technology, man. <laughs> yeah, we're almost technology. there. We're, we're we're almost there. We are absolutely <laughs> almost there. Um, Ty, what's going on, hey, man? Dude. Welcome to Hi, the live Ty. stream, man. Appreciate uh, appreciate you joining us. Speaking of Ty, um, I, I, as we're getting more and more people rolling in, probably be a good time to point out. Speaking of Ty, he started his own podcast. Uh, I think he calls it. Ty Keen podcast. I don't know what he called it, but he did start doing his own podcast and he had kind of a, a great discussion. And I do want to shout that out 
Uh, it was a discussion on inflation. And I really just, uh, I enjoyed the discussion. I enjoyed his take. Uh, it is it is definitely rated PG-13 or above. Um, <laughs> he doesn't hold back on his, uh, mm-hmm. on his, on his, uh, on his feelings, but, uh, I, I really liked it. And, and I really, I really think, uh, I mean, the only thing I really like is him and I think, think a lot alike too, in terms of, uh, the kind of w- where the policy begins as well. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate his, his, uh, the few takes he had on the connection to policy, uh, so it was a great, um, it was a great podcast and he got that off the ground. So I'm excited for that. And I'm also excited yeah. for him as well. Cause he also launched a Patreon as well. And I will go ahead and plug his Patreon. Uh, I was quick to sign up uh, right when I saw that uh, get off the ground. And, and I'll tell you one of the reasons that I'm, I'm always quick to sign up for, for anything like this. And, uh, in, in terms of supporting, listen, you know, people, people will message me and say something to the extent of, Hey, you know, I'd like to support you, but the, you know, I'm not a trader investor. Don't, don't support me. We have a supporter tier if that's what you're looking for. But really what I do is for investors and traders who are active investors and traders. And that is what I'm, I, you know, I set out to do and specifically yeah. to, um, specifically, uh, to, to take, the framework, well, I put out the tweet today, right? To take the MMT framework for analysis and I'm well-versed in the data that's out there that's available and I've been able to connect the dots and if that's something you're interested in, I, I mean, that's, you know, for, for the, the right way to put it, I sell that research, right? That's what I'm looking to do. But I, I couldn't have even began to do what I do if it wasn't for the, the academic minds like Warren Mosler, like Steve Keen, like guys like Ty who are building the models that... I will then look at and say, holy shit, that looks identical to the cycles you see in this data set, right? So uh, that is what I have done. So listen, if, if you're not an active trader, an active investor, and you still want to support people in our community, and you still want to support me, the way you can do that is by supporting the people who I need to continue to do the good, the good yeah, academic right. work. And Ty is definitely one of those people. Um, I am beyond excited about some of the models that he's building in Minsky because once they, I mean, it, it, it's stuff I've wanted to do and he's finally doing it. And once I can get my hands on some of that stuff, you know, that, that, that is, uh, I mean, that, that, you know, I, I, the work in these models is the lab, right? I mean, when you start making these connections, when you start playing around with these things, patterns show up, things show up where you're able to start making the connections and you understand, okay, the, the data that we observe is, a, is, is it follows the same pattern as these models, then you can start actually predicting the future based on that. I mean, that's what it's all about, at least where I'm coming yeah. from, understanding the future. And it's because people like Ty uh, are doing the hard work and have done the hard work. So look, if you want to support <laughs> what we're doing here mm-hmm. at the MMT Macro Trader in this live stream, a way you can do that is by supporting the people whose work and research we're dependent on uh, to build from. And if it wasn't for, again, people like Steve Keen, people like uh, uh, Warren Mosler and the rest of the MMT crew from you know Warren Ray to Stephanie Kelton, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing here. So, uh, if, if yeah, you know, right. if, if you can support Ty and, uh, he's, he's getting that off the ground and I'm excited to see where he goes from that. So, uh, that'll be kind of my, my final, <laughs> my final plea to support, uh, you, you know, in, in any, in any means that you can here, any, in any, in any fashion that you can, but, uh, his Patreon's off the ground. And I'm excited to see that in his, uh, in his, uh, new podcast is off the ground as well. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Right. And, uh, and it's no whole, no holds bar on the, on the podcast. So cool. That sounds uh, good. Oh no, it's great. It's yeah. great. It's great. He, he will, he will definitely make friends and but, make enemies at the same time. So the Steve Keen rubbing yeah. off. On yeah. Him, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It really, yeah. 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 So not a, po- not a post to the odd cuss word. <laughs> you, also, also, if you, if you've only got like a dollar or two to spare, you could always just, uh, go to the, uh, donations for my websites if you want yeah you can definitely check out yeah bijou's blog has uh who, who's the who do you use? i do kofi or you can yeah, put paypal yeah, you yeah, can do any yeah. basically any amount so it's like you know if you want to support uh douglas you can like do a one dollar to me yeah and uh <laughs> and I'll, and I'll, I'll be more motivated to work for douglas <laughs> right 
yeah, yeah. So check out the the Bijou blog as well. But uh, anyway, I, I at least wanted to get to that during today's live stream. And Ty, I'm I'm excited to see some of those models you put together and uh, see what we can uh, see what we can glean from that. Uh, we can go any kind of direction you want to, Bijou, but one of the things I did want okay. to discuss a little bit tonight, I had some really good questions about trading and investing from an MMT perspective. One of my patrons reached out to me, wanted to know some things, and it just kind of, uh, even last week, I think you wanted to know some some stuff about Elliott Wave, so I thought we could go over that. Right. I think we can dive into a few of those topics tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah, that sounds we, good. We might hit, not we might, we will hit that. That'll at least be kind of the main topic we hit. We're still having people uh, kind of um, kind of stroll on in tonight. So, uh, oh, well, you, while they're you... strolling in, I, <laughs> nice. While they're strolling in, maybe I could, uh, yeah, because because I want I want. I mean, okay, I did a um gamma exposure thing for you, mm, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's, that's to... market gamma, by the way, not uh, <laughs> not the high yeah, energy, not the Hulk. Uh, not, not the high energy wave. <laughs> we, we could do with the MMT Hulk of some sort, though. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe later on down the line. Actually, that'll be a good outro one day. Do a Hulk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. With the gamma gamma exposure stuff with old Perthiliev and all that, I, I wanted to maybe write that up just so that I can, uh, you know, understand it for myself a bit better. So maybe it'll be actually really good if you could go through all that. Yeah, we'll do. Look at the gamma exposure. Bouja. Did you? Oh, you did. You did put. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I put it up, but but maybe I'll check. Uh, like I said, I want to check it with you. Hold on. By the way, um, no, you is, never. Is you, never you, file. you never sent me out. Never sent Michiganese exposure. Exposure. Wow. How do you? I pronounce... think that's a British. That's a British one, right? How would you, so you pronounce? Got, it? You got like. How would you pronounce Korean exposure? Is like ex- yeah, I think the Korean translation is like exposure. Ex- pronounce, <laughs> pronounce pronounce exposure. Got, uh, in california exposure or you know what what would you say the australian one was exposure mate <laughs> exposure yeah i was yeah. scottish uh like exposure laddie <laughs> i think uh if you translate it into irish it's coming out the best it's like you know something like uh exposure you cunt <laughs> whoa 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 <laughs> On this on this side of the pond, that c word is. Uh... <laughs> oh, okay, it's like Irish is ex- ex- exposure. You can't. <laughs> PG thirteen. Uh, uh, but yeah, if you go into that, that'd be cool. Did you send? You didn't send. You didn't send me a file though. What? Oh, okay. It's on the dashboard, right? So, um, ah, uh, hang on. Yeah, yeah send, I didn't get. Yeah, send me the file. I didn't get time to. Uh, put it through um, uh, hollow views or whatever, but um, I'll, I'll send you that later. Okay, it's not a, no urgency on that. For, for those of you who have, who have the slightest clue what we're talking about, when uh, there are things called options, hopefully you're aware of options. You can make a bet on the future price of an underlying right. of an underlying security, right? And you make that bet by by creating a contract with someone else who says, "Hey." If you know the S and P is at is at forty three hundred, you have the right to buy the S and P. I'm, I'm sorry, you have the right to buy the S and P at forty three hundred dollars a share, for in the lack of a better way of putting it, a future right uh, on a, right. on a certain date into the future, right? Yeah. So if the s p is at 4500 let's say let's say the few let's say this option expires to, to buy so it's an option to buy something or an option to sell something right. let's say this future this future expires on uh december 31st right and you bought this option to uh be able to buy the s p at 4300 and the s p is at 4600 right well the person on the other side has to sell you at 4300 right that's right. it's part of the contract and so you're going to end up making the $300 profit. And usually options yeah. contracts are for 100 shares. So it's 100 times whatever uh, whatever that yeah. is. So you can imagine because of the leverage in options, because this, this multiplier, it's 100 shares, that uh, the directional risk to the other person of that trade on the other side of that trade is massive, right? You're doing it 100 shares yeah. over, right? Now, what does the person get on the other side? Well, they get... They, they get the cost of the contract. There's a cost of this contract, right? So they get they get the guaranteed free money of the cost of the contract. Then they're at risk 
for the direction that the market might go. Now, if the market ends up mm. at 4299 and the contract was at 4300, it's a worthless contract, right? They will gladly sell you the S&P at 4300 on December 31st, if it's 4,200, because they're going to make money. Obviously, you're not going to go into that, but you are out the price of that contract. Now, in the options world, it's always a dealer on the other end of the options contract. And there is uh, a lot of exposure <clears throat> because of the notional value of, um, yeah, CFDs operate in a very similar way, right? Because the notional value of the underlying asset that these dealers have to be buying and selling billions upon billions upon billions of dollars worth of hedging because of the directional exposure. They don't care about the direction. Right. What they want to do is just collect the premiums on these contracts and make their, you know, make their millions that way as opposed to making right. directional bets. The gamma exposure is a measure of effectively where that hedging has to take place by the dealers, right? That's all public information. So you can see where the dealers are doing their hedging ad. And what, what you notice over time is that price ends up, uh, kind of, it's kind of like a gravity well, if you will. Price finds right. its way towards the largest gamma exposure, right? And it's just a, it's just a function of the way the game is played. It's, it's a function of how, uh, how price kind of discovers itself through any given cycle, and it will oftentimes find its way towards the largest, uh, the largest gamma build. Does it have to happen every way that time? No. Um, it can also be a very strong indicator of potential volatility as well. So it's not a great directional prediction, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're not going to get like a, uh, some sort of long-term directional understanding from understanding gamma, but it can give you a short-term understanding of uh, potential resistance uh, upward resistance where, you know, a ceiling might be on price and it can also show you where support might be uh, on the short run uh, during any given play. So it, it can be used as a timing tool and also a bit of a measure of overall potential volatility in the market. Uh, a way you would look at that is if it looks like the market might be highly volatile or really high, what you might call high price variance. So the statistics world, it would be volatile. In the market world, you might just want to call it a price variance. So a high a high price variant sort of market would be the market starts up a half a percent, swings down two percent, and then finishes the day up two percent. That is a that is a hell of a ride for the market, right? That's a high price variance, and, and we would call that a high market volatility day. Um, if you have a day like that, you might not want to have a big position because you just might not be able to you know handle the swings, right? Uh, right. And the gamma the the gamma exposure of any market can kind of give you an indication of how broad that variance might be in any given trading day uh, and vice versa can show you that, you know, it's very unlikely that you're going to get a close above a, a percent higher, percent lower. And if that's the case, you might be able to, to live with larger leverage because the swings, uh, because the swings aren't too, too big. Right. Um, right. And so that's kind of what the gamma information is. And Daniel, as you, as you jump in here, Hey, welcome to the chat. And you're absolutely right. I trade futures. I used to do options. I just couldn't handle it. I, I just, it just, there was, too much calculus going on amongst everything else. And so I stick with futures. I get the leverage I need. Uh, it's not too much. It's just right. But that is the that is the path that I ultimately, yeah, that I ultimately, I, I mean, you have so many decisions to make while you're trading to begin with, right? I mean, there's so many things you have to get right. Um, and I've, I've done this before where I had the directional call right, but I just constructed the wrong options position to take advantage of that, uh, to, to take, to take uh, fully take advantage of, of the directional position. And at the end of the day, uh, it, it just is to me, leverage futures, uh, takes away, you know, potential mistakes that can be made, uh, when you're trying to construct a trade and ultimately with futures. But with that being said, options are huge and, it, and people use them primarily for hedging, but, uh, yeah. the options market is huge and that's what the gamma stuff is for. So right. anyway, that was long winded, but I think, you, okay. I think you get the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the gamma essentially, uh, I guess in a, um, Taylor series or black skulls type thing is the, is the acceleration. So, so it's, it's, it's really, it really is an important, important measure if you're um, mm -hmm. doing uh, short term high frequency trading or anything like that, which is basically, I think, don't they? Wouldn't wouldn't they just automate all of that now? 
a lot of that is automated. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, like you say, it's it's a pain in the ass to, <laughs> you know, pull that, whip out the spreadsheet and, and do that. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. This actually brings me to the discussion I did want to have tonight regarding trading and the question that came up. Um, I, I had a question from a patron member regarding short-term patterns, uh, kind, of, kind of intraday patterns that get you kind of begin to observe play out. And it, it does mm-hmm. seem like there is there can be a lot of activity out of the gate you know, the first hour, hour and a half, and then you get kind of a lull midday in any given day. And then sometimes you can see kind of an acceleration near the end of the day, right? It is various patterns that play out throughout the day. Um, Sometimes you get days and and you get kind of day stacked back to back where it's, it's, you know, you get selling out of the gate and it's just selling all day, or you get buying out of the gate and it's buying all day, right? So you get these various days and these various patterns. And the question was, uh, is there, you know, have I noticed any patterns? Is there any way to really exploit these things? And my, my response was, yeah, I, they're, they're, these patterns are definitely observable and, and I've observed them and they, and they have a theoretical basis as well, right? I mean, dealers have certain time frames they do things. Undoubtedly, there's time frames when uh, certain institutions are going to be making you know, the plays they need to make, right? There's a uh, rebalance in this to take place. Not only are there certain frequencies that these things happen on a day-to-day basis, but there's also uh, – there's also um, – like institutional rebalancing or fund rebalancing that has to mm-hmm. happen on a quarterly basis, right? So I mean, there are all these different, you know, all these different patterns. the pr- The problem is, and and here's here's where kind of the 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 difficulty is is anything that can be statistically, how do I put this? Anything that can be statistically expressed, or anything that can be right, right? So you you can express, you could see the potential patterns from rebalancing or kind of intraday patterns. Right, statistically, because you would see them play out time and time again. Right. In other words, even right. if even if you didn't know that dealers uh, usually by about ten a.m. are is when they're going to click their you know when, when they're going to start to make the decision for what the hedging is that they need to take place. Right. Let, let's say you even knew that mm-hmm. you, you, you I'm sorry you, you didn't know that you could still deduce that because you could see certain statistical uh, certain certain statistical patterns. Um, right play out and then glean from that that this you know this sort of stuff is happening right and, okay. and and the point i was kind of making in my response is if you've witnessed this undoubtedly the smartest people in the world with the best tools in the world with billions of dollars in hardware and software development um have also noticed this right <laughs> yeah. and right. and so it becomes very difficult to beat. Now, on any short-term run, you can kind of stumble upon a good pattern, right? And and you can see this thing repeat. And if you know if your timing is right, you can ride it for a while. But eventually, the algorithm—I mean, there are algorithms in place to notice this, right? Uh, so on 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 the short run, I, I just. I know that I'm up against machines and I know that I'm up against tools and, and, and thinkers Mm -hmm. that I just don't, it's not a game I want. (laughs) It's not a game I want to to play. Right. Um, I mean, I'm very confident in myself, but I also know that, uh, that there's a, there's an MIT course and the guy who started, one of the guys who started the Millennium Fund, which is right up there with Rentec and Jim Simons for the most successful trading funds. And he does a course on this and he's doing uh, stuff on like eigenvector and eigenvalues. And um, it's the first time I had heard some of the kind of deep, deeper statistical concepts to, to properly determine price. And he's kind of given some thoughts uh, on, on how this all pieces together. And he's talking, I mean, I, I mean, Bijou, obviously you're, you know, <laughs> you're a PhD, you're a smart guy. This would all make complete sense to you. But you know, so much of this stuff that he's just saying is, you, you know, yeah, this is easy stuff. You don't even have to, right. you, you know, let, let's move on to the real difficult stuff, you know, <laughs> you, you know, goes over, goes over your head and, and you just realize right. that from a mathematical standpoint, you, you know, the, the best minds are, um, have, have already solved a lot of this problem. So, uh, right. it, it's, it's very difficult to find 
in my opinion, it, it'd be very difficult unless unless you really had a, a very brilliant mathematical mind to go that route. And so from from my perspective, where I think there's still absolutely an edge, and I can trace that, I mean, I can visually see the edge, is to know that the theoretical construction, the framework for analysis, uh, which I'm gonna, that's gonna be my, my go-to phrase <laughs> from here on into the future, <laughs> yeah. the framework for analysis is where the majority have it wrong and where the exploit is, right? Because I can hear, right. I can right. listen to the biggest names just get it wrong, right? I mean, they, yeah. they can get the basics wrong. And if they're getting the basics wrong, that means that even though they might have a more sophisticated tool set than I have, you still have to program your assumptions in, no, no matter how sophisticated right. of a, a tool set you have. And if your assumption is that government spending is diverting, uh, <coughs> sorry guys, if government spending is diverting capital from the private sector, right? If you know, if you if you have that faulty monetarist view, you're coding that into your you know you're coding that in to your uh, to your system, and I and I can take advantage of that, right? I mean, I, I know I can take advantage of that, right. and I can build tools to take advantage of that. So that, that is that is why for me, I, I stick with longer term, you know, I personally stick with longer term plays and why I, I and, and I think that's really how you take advantage of, um, how you take advantage of kind of the MMT play. And, and B, B, yeah. I'll, I'll add this one final one final part because I, I get the same question quite often. Uh, what One of my biggest, uh, uh, although we're both in agreement on the MMT, but our, our, our biggest, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, I don't want to say opponent, but our, our biggest competition in the MMT space uh, will make the case quite often that uh, you can you can see some of the shorter term fiscal flows correlate with moves in the market, and right. uh, you, you know within like a day to day or week to week sort of thing, and I, and I'll, I'll tell you that um, I don't see that to be the case. I mean, we we've done extensive analysis on short-term fiscal flows, Bijou and I, we've looked over this in the past, and it really is not until you get about six months to a year out uh, where kind of the buildup of the fiscal flow over time is really what is predict predictive, and it really is further out in time. On, on a day-to-day -day basis, there are so many underlying factors that can determine price within you know, three or 4% of where price is right now that has nothing to do with the fiscal flow on any given day. And so again, that, that is, that is part of the, you know, why I trade the way I do. Um, I, I, cybernetics, I don't know who you're calling. I, 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 your guess is as good as mine on who I'm actually calling out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but from a statistics standpoint, I, I have yet to be able to see anything that says on a short term basis, that there is any uh, that there's any predictability on a short term basis, and I, I will never sell what I'm selling, saying like, yeah, you can really make short term trades uh, with uh, with what I'm with, with, with kind of the the core MMT flow data. Now, are there situations right. like the debt ceiling that could happen that an MMT framework will tell you <laughs> will absolutely crush? Yes. Are there is is the MMT case that there is a massive drain on reserves that's going to occur during tax season that can cause uh, a brittleness to the market structure. And that's oftentimes why you see crashes happening right after major tax drains. Yes. Uh, but statistically over time, it, it looks it, it looks like any other factor has a, as much of a determinant factor on uh, the price tomorrow or next week as any given yeah. uh, as any given fiscal, you know, any given fiscal flow might have. So, um, well, Although to be fair to the nemesis, I, th I think the uh, I think the nominator is um, also doing longer longer term trading. He does, I, yeah. 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 And I, I don't check Patreon out, but just from the sound of it, it's like yeah, he's like so he's agreeing with you in a, in some sense. It's about the uh, the time, the characteristic time, and the legs. And he, he's also I think the nominator is saying it's also long. And so you, you you structure your trades for, for that, and not you don't mess around with short short term trading. Um, this is listen. I'm not. Yeah, maybe I'm not. I'm not disagreeing about the actual time. The time legs is the thing. I, I'm not going to specify any given MMT uh, applied MMT analysis type, but there are MMT YouTubers out there who will say 
uh, like, you know, I'm getting bullish here because it's tax season or, or I'm sorry, I'm getting bearish because it's tax season or, you know, this is the top. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I really think the window for really what I, I probably the way I'd phrase it is the window for kind of exploiting the market is probably six months out in, into the future. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, a good example uh, of this is the case I made six months, six months ago yesterday. I, I, I went on Twitter and kind of made my, my thorough bull, my thorough bull case. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that, uh, yeah, that we'd see markets go higher and that we weren't going to see a recession. And, uh, you know, I mean, lo and behold, here we are six months later, S and P is up 8% yeah. NASDAQ up 20%, uh, yeah. in, in the face of, you know, a prediction, I, I, I would imagine at that point in December of 2022, the, uh, you know, the prediction likelihood for a recession by June of 2023 was probably almost a hundred percent most people's books. Right. Um, but yet here we are. And, and, and again, the only way you kind of understand that is through an MMT framework to, despite, despite what my bit. distractors, <laughs> like I immediately, right. immediately within three minutes, that goofball, Kevin uh, Tartis, uh, uh-huh. quick, quickly posted the Venezuela stock market. MMT is great for the <laughs> stock market. LOL. And the dude, within three minutes, he responds to that. So I had a little fun that, um, I'm, you know, oh, yeah. I was very impressed with how quick he was able to get, get his, uh, his response back that I, I could tell he knew I was going to make my victory lap soon. And that he had that queued up ready to go. So Kevin, if you're watching, man, I, I, obviously if you've looked at my Twitter over the last six months, uh, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of victory laps I can take. So get, uh, get your, get your anti MMT <laughs> responses queued up and yeah. ready to go. Uh, Cause I'll be, yeah. I'll be, I'll be taking the Drive opportunity. The, so take it, man. Drive yeah. the algorithm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, got, I, I wonder. Yeah, because it, it's really interesting that that the your MMT framework for analysis is is you know suggesting that there might be a bit of a longer time for fiscal flows to kick in. Because when you think about it, that is actually, I mean. I'm a bit of an outsider because I'm just doing the um, I'm just doing the low level coding and modeling, but but isn't that like quite radical to think? Because you know the the paradigm or the or the thinking I think is that you know it's it's all pretty chaotic. It's like Austrian school thinking dominates in 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 trading and finance, I think, and so it's like um, you know if you if you don't have if you don't know the political landscape ahead. Uh, and, you, and you can't sort of predict all of that, like you know whether a war will break out or whatever, or you know trade negotiations will break down, or, or some some politician will slap on tariffs or something like that. Then uh, subtracting all that, it's like it's pretty chaotic. So it's like I, uh, you know, it's like the weather. It's like trying to predict the weather. And so if you think if you're talking like as an MMT and you're saying, oh, it's, a, it's a, sort of around about you know between three to six, maybe twelve months. People are going to kind of be shocked, I think, by that. I would imagine. I don't. I don't know. Okay, so but it's, it's quite a radical position because 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 un- what what the normanator is talking about, I think, is timescales that are more psych- psychological, and that really is a bit a bit dicey. But but if you have a feel for the psychology of of the market or the street, uh, then you know maybe maybe you can you can give some good good advice, trading advice, um, just based on the psychology. Yeah, but but it wouldn't be if you're saying it's the physical flows. You you might not be have the correct story or narrative for it because it's it's more psychological, which gets into the Elliott wave analysis. What yeah yeah, which yeah. I, I want to sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get you to yeah. talk about at some stage because there's a lot there because because that's based on uh, kind of a, a bit of a biology or psychological thing yeah. itself. Yep, yep. Because the way that the Fibonacci sequences work in nature is it's usually hormones. Or some sort of chemical gradient that drives growth away from the other areas. You know, so, so if some area grows strong, the next spurt of hormones is going to go somewhere else. Yeah, that, you know, yeah. where there's where there's actual space to grow. And so I can easily see, oh, that's going to apply to market, but not hormones. You know, it's it's really the the psychology and the sort of bit of the group think of. Uh, how investors get uh, actually educated even, you know, because they all get sort of trained in the same way. Um, so there's a, like an intellectual psychological hormones flowing around there that are making these these interesting uh, Elliott Wave type market movements. These patterns play that's out what, That's time. all I can say yeah, for, yeah. for now. It's yeah, just yeah. a high level view. Yeah. But, uh, I'll get into yeah. Elliott Wave in just a second. Um, I, a couple, com- <clears throat> couple comments to make real quick. 
num- yeah. number one, uh, Ty, Kevin Tart has changed his banner on Twitter to include a bunch of the uh, like Von Hayek and uh, Rothbard Ooh. type. So oh, I, think, I, 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 I think he's in that camp. Uh, number number two is Bijou. I, I don't, in terms of the, I think the reason that the fiscal flow data starts to get so predictive six six months to a year out has less to do with the fact that it's not, like I, I think it it is factoring into tomorrow's price. I, I don't deny that, uh-huh. but I think I think there are so many more factors that are so uh, they're, they're so much louder to the market mm-hmm. on a short run, right? That um, and maybe you can think of a good physics example or a good uh, just just I, a good a good statistics yes. example. But yeah. if 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 you were to if you were to get if you had the ability to remove you know c- kind of the political jawboning if you had the ability to remove the the dealer activity that happens in markets right if you're able to remove quite a few of the even like the behavioral dynamics right uh, that, that might right. push price right if you were able to remove a lot of the stuff that is not determinant of the long term trajectory of yeah. the price of the market you would see the market likely follow uh of course i mean the minute you remove all of this it ceases to be a market but yeah. the, you, you know still, but the, I, I know what you mean it's you important. know you're able to right the, the market would be <laughs> the market would be the fiscal flow. I, I mean, d- right? Because yeah, yeah. because by by definition, I just removed anything else that would make it the market. I know, the market. I know. Right. And my, my the thing is, when you put in all the reality, you still got the market there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the sun going up and down every day. So my 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 point is, and I don't want to call it noise. I mean, it really is determinant of price. And I mean, the market is always right. Whatever the price, whatever the market price is, that's what the market price is. It's not right or wrong. It just is what it is. Right. But yeah. what what I'm what I'm saying is, let, let's just say, let's just put it this way. Um, you know, a, a lot of people pointed out that like the, the, the deficit grew over the last two years by 50% or something like that. We are at, you know, whatever, 20, 20 trillion, uh, and like, you know, 2019, whatever it was, 20 trillion in 2019, 30 trillion in 2022 or whatever. And it was a very short, the fastest growth, the shortest period of time, whatever, whatever. It was like 44%, which is identical to what the S&P grew over that same time frame, right? It was ex- exactly the same, 44% two years later, mm-hmm. right? And that's not coincidental, right? That, that's because it, that is, again, that is the market, right? Uh, and, and all my, my, my point would kind of be something like this, that it, that it, on, on a, on the short run, it is very unlikely that price is identical with what I would say is the the price mechanism for what the market is, right? Like the the core determinant factor. But the further you get out in time, the more likely it is that it's going to have time to find, you know, effectively what is the remainder of uh, the, uh, of the private sector savings that ends up in the market, right? Um, yeah. And so th- that's why the correlations start to show up after six months so strong, yeah. you know, so strongly, right? And that's where the exploit is because yeah. in, in in the short run over six months, there are so many theories as to why the market will go whatever it, direction it's going to go and the game gets yeah. played. But on the long run, um, the vast majority of theories are incorrect, because they have yeah. the wrong framework for analysis, and that's what you can exploit, and that's why after six months it starts to correlate so well with kind of the MMT yeah. the MMT framework. Um, that's right. So I, I did I did want to kind of correct that part, and again maybe, maybe there's an example or a good analogy that can be made from the physics world or, or from you know. Yeah, from, that's a, that's a good that's a good nuance. I I actually I kind of understood that it's what you were saying. So it's a, it's a good that clarification rather than a correction. But um, but yeah, it comes down to I I I I think in terms of uh, time scales, characteristic times and things. So it's the same same thing. Like you got the complexity of a like a plasma or fusion reactor. The the problem with uh, handling handling um, ionized gases or fusion is you got a lot of different time scales involved. 
injecting injecting energy and energy losses and so you have to have an analysis of the microsecond time scale um which is you know where magnetic fields and so forth can can rapidly fluctuate and, and do crazy things uh and then you've got a longer term time scale which is you know could be seconds or longer but also this actually multiple time scales and i think in markets and the economy it, t there's quite a few different time scales especially once uh high frequency you know automated um you know nanosecond trading ha has injected a whole new time scale <laughs> into the market yeah yeah and yeah. that that's a, that's one time scale it's almost like just noise now but but people are obviously making money out of it but then you've got that and then you've got you know um older uh, like traders who don't have the supercomputers, but they're still doing a bit of algorithmic trading. It's another time scale. And then you've got day day traders, um, or actually in between. There's probably something in between there that I'm missing, like hourly, like you know, quick. It's, quick, it's, quick called, it's called there's called swing trading. That is, yeah, yeah, was, yeah within a couple hours yeah. to a couple days, those are called swing yeah. traders. Yeah, yeah. And then you've probably got something like the Normanator, who's between them and you, or the between the day traders and and yourself, and yeah, so there's a lot of timescales to, to handle. And I think Daniel in the chat made a good point there. It's like MT is good for the direction, but maybe not good for the exact timing. But I, th I, I think that kind of makes yeah. a lot of sense to me. Which, which yeah. the, I mean, the other thing too, if you're going to be a good trader and, and you want to be an active trader, you have to you have to be well-versed in the short-term stuff, right? Um, yeah. th thankfully, we haven't had a situation in quite a while where kind of my short-term chops have really had to come in to, to play. But... Uh, during the the COVID sell off uh, in February and into March 2020, um, I mean, y you have to have in your tool bag if, if you're going to be a trader like that, the ability to understand and navigate a sell off like we saw uh, in uh, in February and, and early March of 2020. Right. So it, you know, I, I haven't had to get super active, but I was very active during that time frame. And I mean, there's a few times since where I've had to get very active. So there are times mm -hmm. when you have to understand the short term stuff. Um, right. and if I, you know, if, I mean, if I had more time to be at my desk all day and that's, that's kind of all I was doing <laughs> through the day, m m maybe I'd probably, I I'd try and eke out a few extra, you know, a, yeah. a few extra, a few extra points a year. Um, yeah. but at this point I'm, I'm content right. with, uh, <laughs> yeah, with the setup. Yeah. yeah. Got. Other uh, opportunity costs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Do the education as well. Gotta, gotta keep it, keep that. But I don't know. It'd get a bit boring for me if I was just doing one thing all the time, just thinking about money. You gotta have you gotta have some time to spend your money. Yes, yes. That, that's the other. That's, well, that's why I'm married, that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You got that channel covered. <laughs> an outflow there. Uh, yes, yes. Sorry, so, sorry, wife. She usually watches uh, her. And my sorry, kids will turn this. Now. Yeah, yeah. She'll yeah. she'll she'll turn these on. <laughs> So the divorce papers okay. might be uh, might be served up if she uh, if she's <laughs> watching these with the kids. Uh, but before you go on, I think I think the other point to make here is that, like you say, um, th you know when when economists try to try to ace physicists and try to sort of uh, do their solvable models, it's just a complete joke. I mean, any any physicist doing any complex system isn't isn't thinking about solvable models. <laughs> they're thinking about numerical simulation all the time so if you really want to be like a, a physics or an econo physics person you, you should really be concentrating on numerical methods not not um exact solutions and uh you know probably dump black skulls even though it's useful for some things like uh, gamma and exposure and all that but the thing or the point the point to make is that there, there are a lot of analogies with physics and we we've actually mentioned a few already in the past live streams and on my blog and uh and the thing is i think the, the way i yeah i mean i haven't deeply thought about it but the way i think about it is that um fiscal flow or currency injections are basically energy a fuel for the economy and if you look at Ooh, uh, yeah, tide, i think that's a good analogy yeah and, yeah and steve king um that's kind of what they say like steve king yeah. just does the standard yeah. lecture now where he's basically saying gdp is energy it's like linear relationship all the way leonti of production functions so if you, if you're at, if you're thinking about um your trading at, at all in terms of more macroeconomic terms that's that's a useful sort of analogy to just to have in mind 
I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's any particular model I can do for pricing based on that. But it's just a like Douglas said, it's like a framework for analysis. It it put kind of puts your ducks in the row in a row a little bit. It it gives you a a more confidence in, in maybe in some of your modeling and, and so forth. You you think of um in a monetary system, money is the energy that is going in. And yep. and and Steve Keen is pointing out it, actually it's uh actually that's how real production occurs too, because in a monetary economy, your money is producing energy or u- use of energy. So um so it's more more than a good analogy in other words it's 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 kind of almost actually works out that it is essentially uh currency well circulating currency so currency that's in your bank account or in someone's savings account is just um you know stored energy it's like a battery battery that isn't being used yeah yeah <laughs> I I think that okay. makes sense. I'm I'm seeing some good chat stuff uh, come in too. Okay, uh, I'm slowly catching up on. But uh, uh, Roar and Arl, often, man, often, uh, often to uh, other areas. Yeah, Gamma, Elliot, yeah. Or anything yeah. else? We'll, we'll look at tweets. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we can definitely get on Twitter. Yeah. Discussion. Let's go down the uh, Let's go down the Elliot Wave path, and I, I could discuss okay. that for a little while as well. While you were talking to us, I said, hopefully this all works. I set up a few things and okay. um, hopefully this will all work. But let's talk Elliott Wave. So in in, in trader land, <laughs> there is, generally speaking, two ways to analyze market. There, there would be called, what's called fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Right. Macro would fall under fundamental analysis, right? You're you're looking at the data in the economy and making determinations on that data about you know what, what direction markets will go based on the economic data that's available, right? So that's fundamental. Technical analysis is you're looking at the charts and determining based based on the price pattern of the charts what what has you know what what is being expressed by that price pattern from the mar- uh, you know the market is expressing by that price pattern and what can you project out based on prior p- uh, price patterns a, a classic way to look at charts is to look at things like support and resistance right and i, I can show you just a, a great example of that is the 3600 level uh, on the chart here on the s p 500 right at 3600 back in october of 2020 september and october of 2020 uh, the market fought at that level for quite a while and then eventually burst through. Um, hold, you know what, Roar and Aura, though? Hold on. This is, I, I will actually make the case that there's actually something to, there, there's actually a scientific basis for, um, that might be, a, that might be pushing a little too far. I, I, I think you can actually, I, I think you can actually make a case that, that, yeah, th- there is actually a, a a rational case to be made that that there's something to TA right now. Can you distill a true edge out of TA? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but I actually think there's something to technical analysis, uh, e- even if no one else used TA, even if it wasn't a self fulfilling prophecy, if you will. Um, that 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 you're actually there's actually something to be gleaned uh, from technical analysis, and I, and I think you can uh, again make a, a reasoned case uh, that that it. Yeah, but with that being said, I, Roar and Aura, I, I absolutely uh, agree with anyone who would have skepticism over TA. Um, yeah, I mean, count me as a skeptic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, how do I, Bish? Maybe you can think of something where it's like, um, the, the, you know, like like any emergent property, right? Like, yeah. uh, undoubtedly, there's science any- to to explain yeah. it but to look yes. at the observe uh, to 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 observe the emergent property and try and work backwards <laughs> you're never going to you're never going to get the right answer I, I i think is maybe the, the the way to look at it right like uh Wait, well, hang on say that again uh i'm probably not saying it correctly to look at big um no. if you were just to see the the outcome the property the the right. the, the visual output of yeah. um of the emergent phenomenon yeah Yeah. you you have no reason to believe that just by observing that that you will be able to deduce what the (laughs) fact what the factors are that are causing that emerging i'm sorry the emergent phenomenon to occur right 
Um, right. It has to be discovered via other means. Um, and that'll be the yeah, case, yeah. that'll be the I, case I, that I, I demonstrate. Right. That that'll be the case that I demonstrate in just another in just a second. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's a floor. In te- I mean, some some of the technical analysis people they just don't care about the um, any model or causal mechanisms. They're just kind of doing it. Uh, at least from what I've read, um, kind of doing it like horoscopes, like mm-hmm. Ryan always mm-hmm. said. By the way, that I'm not. I'm not saying GDP is is a measure of energy. You know, it's not. But it, but it is. It scales one to one with your uh, currency circulation. Um. So let, uh, let me. Yeah, Leonti of production functions is what you want to look up there. Just just check it out. Uh, look up Steve King's lectures. So, but um, yeah, going back to the technical analysis, it's like I I, th- I, I agree with what you just said. It's like um, if you if you want to really explain this stuff. And, and get it right then first you know you might observe observe these patterns uh but what i'm missing what i haven't seen is a really good uh convincing explanation for how they arise and so that oh i will give like that i will give that to you biological today. systems yeah, 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 you get the, yeah, the, yeah we'll, biological we'll, systems of hormones and, and chemical yeah. stuff but I, I don't currently know what that is in terms of uh, markets I'll give you. I'll give you my 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 take on this uh, in, in terms good. of okay. So to, to set the stage, uh, take just a quick step back. I use Elliott Wave as my technical analysis tool. We we all kind of have one. It, it, we we all do, even if rationally it might not make sense to do it. We all have a, our own tool set, technical analysis tool set. I use Elliott Wave, and when when people understand Elliott Wave and they come on and they join up. They understand what I'm doing. I don't have to explain it to them. People have never heard of Elliott Wave. I have to explain to them, like, look, it's essentially my language for how I'm interpreting the markets, right? I- I'm explaining to you in a technical way what I think markets are actually doing, right? In other words, I am solely making my decisions based on a fundamental macro approach, but I express those decisions in a technical framework because I think that is the language that I need to use to communicate what it is that I'm seeing. So that's why I use Elliott Wave um, as a way to communicate what I think is likely happening in the context of the language of Elliott Wave, right? And so Elliott Wave is really just an annotation of charts to say certain patterns have played out, certain observable patterns have played out, and that those patterns have uh, have uh, according to kind of Elliott Wave, have emerged because of certain behavioral dynamics that that are that are right. underway. So, in, in kind of basic technical analysis, the, the core of technical analysis is certain support and resistance. So, we had this resistance that occurred in in, uh, in late 2020 uh, at the 3600 level for the S and P. We eventually burst higher from that resistance. Once that resistance gave way, we saw a strong rally, and then eventually we found a new resistance at the 45, 4,600 level uh, where price rejected. And then eventually we pushed all the way back uh, nearly two years to the date later and found support once again at the prior resistance. Uh, very classic, right. very classic technical analysis. Cool. Right. All right. So hang on a minute there though. So my, I'm thinking you're measuring support and resistance. That again, to use physics analogies, which is so, <laughs> yeah. maybe not the best thing to do, but that's the way I, underst- way I can kind of understand it. You're measuring accelerate. It's like measuring acceleration, but you don't know what the force is. Do you know what I mean? Could be, yeah. New- Newton's laws are that yeah. there's a force, call it you know, electricity or, yep. or electromagnetism, that moves things around. Yeah. But the motion is, is you see it in acceleration or competing accelerations you know in, in a stressed system so you can measure the acceleration on, on a tech, technical analysis chart or using the data but it's not telling me what 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 does okay resistance, what what does yeah, support yeah, yeah. actually mean in yeah. terms of okay actual forces actual psychology actual uh you know what actually in the real world makes things so ellie so elliot wave is going to supply some of that in just a second and then the next thing is a common example or a common explanation of what support and resistance is, is that there's just a lot of sellers at 3,600, right? Uh, uh, okay. And that's why price is that, you know, everyone wants to sell at 3,600. That's what the market is. That's what the market dynamic is saying. And then eventually those sellers get exhausted and the new buying comes, new buyers come into place, right? And finally buyers beat sellers. Sellers have fully exhausted the selling that they wanted to. Now there's only buyers left and then you get a big surge until... Yeah, and, and, you know, until the next support resistance zones have to come into play. 
as it turns out, there's a lot of reasons why support and resistance zones emerge that have nothing to do with the preferences of buying and selling. It has a lot more to do with the hedging dynamics that take place and, and you know other right. factors. But uh, that is kind of the general definition uh, or the general okay. explanation of where support and resistance come from. So that's kind of a, a base case for technical analysis. Now, here's Elliott Wave. The idea of Elliott Wave, and, and it was uh, <laughs> created by this guy named... Ralph Nelson Elliott, thus Elliott Wave, lived a long time ago. He created the the framework for it in uh, in the early twenty uh, mm-hmm. early twentieth century, and um, kind of wrote the book. And then it was repopularized by this this guy named Bob Prechter, who's right. you know, kind of a conspiracy theorist guy at this point. Yeah, um, yeah. but nevertheless, he he repopularized it in the eighties, and uh, and uh, you know now it's now it's a thoroughly I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of traders uh, really understand what Elliott Wave is, but the, the the general principle with Elliott Wave, and here's the, the wiki page uh, for for anyone who wants to take a, a look at it, is that price um, price emerges in, in in a wave structure uh, that is predictable and repeatable and fractal, and um, and also explains the underlying psychological dynamics that are at play. So the, the basic idea of an Elliott wave structure is that price unfolds in a five wave sequence higher and then a three wave counter trend sequence lower. And then that cycle repeats itself over time, over and over and over again. And you know, w- one of the things that, that really kind of gets me with Elliott wave right out of the gate is if I draw, let's say, let's say, let's just say I drew something like this. I just drew some some random lines like this. You know, which one of these two line sequences looks like a stock market, <laughs> right? Like if, if you were to draw a logo for the stock market, right. you wanted to, you wanted a, a stock market logo and you knew nothing of Elliott Wave, you're going to make a logo that looks something like that, right? Oh, ah, yeah. Right. I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but that's an interesting thing to, interesting study to do. Because we all know, <laughs> God, guys, sorry. It's all right. We, we all know what a stock market looks like, <laughs> <laughs> right? And a stock market looks like intuitively an Elliott wave sequence. Um, God, if if I if I knew what would come up, I would I would Google stock market logo. <laughs> <laughs> um, more, more in terms of uh, let me let me let me do this real quick. I, I'm gonna I just want to make sure nothing inappropriate comes up. I, uh, stock market logo, and uh, I'll go to images. All right, all right. So I I, I pulled it up here, and yeah, I, I mean. You know, this looks like a stock market. The hopefully you guys can't even see my right. It looks like a stock market. Looks like a stock market, yeah. right? I mean, it kind of has that wave pattern. Um, yeah. so we we all kind of intuitively know what a stock market looks like and, and doesn't look like from from a chart perspective, right? I mean, this is you know very much right. you, know, you know wave wave style patterns. And so this, this guy named R. N. Elliott notices that these wave style patterns happen over and over again, and they happen in this five three pattern, this five three pattern, five up, three back, right? And he then realizes that the reason that these things occur is because certain mar- mar- uh, market psychology is happening, right? So you get this situation where you're at this point uh, where markets are you know, a major crisis has just occurred, market prices are at you know recent lows or all time lows or whatever, right? And it's at this point where the, you know, the real insiders, right? The Warren Buffett's of the world know, hey, we've got a lot of value here, right? Everyone is down on the markets. There's not an investor here. This is when we buy. And all of a sudden you see a blip in the market, right? Uh So you see this push higher in the market. And we don't know this right now, but as it turns out, the bottom is in. And it's this first wave higher that Elliott Wave calls wave one. Then what happens is the the kind of the insiders stop buying, right? They've they've loaded up, prices pushed higher, 
And then usually you get some sort of wave of news that might even be worse than the wave of news that caused the sell-off and starts to push price down, but you never end up getting a new low, right? And slowly but surely, you get this kind of echo of the news that caused the sell-off that might even look worse than the news you have today that causes a mini sell-off. But at this point, the bottom's in. And then all of a sudden, the news starts to change. People are a little bit more interested in whatever market it might be. And you see price recover before it makes a new low. And then you get into this wave three, right? Where everyone starts to realize, wow, we're actually back in a bull market, right? The dog days are over. And this is when all the players really start to come in, right? This is when people feel comfortable to put money back into the market. This is when, uh, you know, institutional flows can't come, come back on, right? And you get this major run higher. And this is the wave three, right? This is when you want to be leveraged. This is when you want to be long. You know, a great example of a wave three in, 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 Elliott, uh, in Elliott terms is what happened during that 2021 run higher, right? That's just your classic wave three. It's an unrelenting push higher. And you finally get to this point where the insiders, the one who really know what they're doing. And so you finally get this wave three, the ones who really, and this is wave two, and that first burst up was wave one. And then you finally get the, the insiders who are like, you know what, I've made tons, right? right? And I know this run is pretty extended. And so they start to sell. And you end up getting this little, this little pause here. Uh -huh. And this ends up being wave four, right? So you get this pullback okay. and you get this pause. And it's at this point that there needs to still be buyers. And the people who are going to be buyers are going to be the ones who saw this big move higher, right? And they're like, hey, we've had this huge move higher in stocks, Bitcoin, whatever, and I want in on this. And that's finally when the, you know, animal spirit, exuberant, over-exuberant euphoria phase kicks in. The, the, blow, right. the blow off top is going to happen. But the only people who are buying at this point are the suckers, Right. Right. And that is going to push price into one final push higher. And that's called wave five in Elliott wave. And at yeah. this point, the institutional insiders, yeah, the FOMO group, exactly. The institutional, the insiders, they've checked out uh, the institutional group. They've bought, they're fully saturated. And it's the FOMO group that are now pushing things higher. But at this point, it's the FOMO group who are now looking to sell. Right. And in fact, even some of the other buyers are looking to sell. But now there's no more buyers left, right? Because the insider guys, the institutions, the real market makers, they're gone and the FOMO money has dried up. And that's when you get the big correction that reverses. And this is where the Fibonacci stuff usually comes in because these reversals end up happening at, at pretty predictive price zones, right? And usually you get a big 50% retrace and then the Elliott pattern repeats, right? You start over after the big the, in, in elliott terms this is an abc pattern lower so all right that is the elliott wave framework i'm not sure i'm not sure i see uh, fibonacci in there fibonacci might be a bit of an a bit of an accidental oh yeah thing. Yeah, yeah okay so fi the fibonacci yeah, the fi hold, hold on the fibonacci sequence though right look at the move from the lows that occurred in march of 2020 right to the high that occurred in January of 2022, it was exactly a 50% pullback where the bottom came in in October of 2022 following the top, right? So we retraced exactly 50%. And this is a Fibonacci, the sequence that's on the chart. I don't know how well you can make this out, Bijou, but it's a Fibonacci right. sequence, zero, 2.36, 3.85, 6.1, 7.8% retrace of that entire move and oftentimes you'll see major retraces hit right at the fibonacci targets uh your fibonacci your main fibonacci bundle if you will is the 38.2 percent retrace the 50 percent retrace and the 61.8 percent retrace and, and you'll see you'll see that you'll see that pattern play out so uh and it really it really does i mean it it, it is it is amazingly common to see um the Fibonacci zones be where major support and resistance ends up showing up. Huh. Uh, okay. I still don't quite understand. I, I, something breaks the sequence because it doesn't, it doesn't continue the Fibonacci sequence. So really underlying it is, is um, something else. It's like, it's like what you just said is, is sort of like to me, 
uh, psychological types. There's there's certain, there's people that are involved in the market, and and you can maybe um, think think of them as as groups of people that that have certain behaviors. Yep. Yep. There's these certain psychological types. Correct. And that and that kind of would explain your story there, because if every you know if everyone's just a similar agent, you know, like neoclassical, you know, homo yeah, yeah, econo- yeah. economicus, I don't think you sort of necessarily get that. Same <laughs> You're right. Yep. Sort of fractal patterns or you get you probably get fractal patterns but it wouldn't be quite the same perhaps you get some noise and and so forth and sort of sort of herd psychology behavior but it would all be the same person correct correct so if you got different psychological types and and quite quite big blocks so th- this is what you know financial anthropologists probably need to get involved yeah, in yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. more cuz i'm pretty sure you know, Bob, Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor, Proctor would them. probably think of himself as something like that. Uh, financial. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah actually. Yeah. yeah. Thinking, yeah. But he probably hasn't done it quite rigorously. He, enough yeah. Because what you're going to do is you've got to um, come up with a hypothesis and try to show that it's wrong. And all that these uh, people who are in the money do is try to show that they're right. <laughs> they're not, they're not really doing proper science. So the, the, again, just to back up, the way that I would use Elliott Wave and the way I do use Elliott Wave in my analysis is I, I try to you know explain, and you can see on the chart right here, right? Um, I think we're likely in a burgeoning wave three, right? I mean, I, I think the, the most likely yeah. case forward here is that we're going to get an extended move higher for years to come, right? But obviously there are factors outside of just kind of the MMT flows that can, um, you know, that can take over, Right. Uh, and, and so I, it's, I, I'm not going to be overly reliant on my account to, to, to trade on, but it is a way for me to express, to say, Hey, here's kind of how I think things could play out given how I'm reading the data. And this is what I would expect. Right. And being that markets are fractal, right. Then I, I would, and being that agents do trade and operate in predictable ways. And like you said, there are groups of agents, yeah. uh, and, and I'll, I'll get into this in a second. Um, to, to kind of, you know, uh, predict it. Yeah. I mean, there's groups that create these predictable patterns, um, and therefore things should play out in, in a, you know, quasi predictable way. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but either way, uh, I don't want to oversell the efficacy of this, but I also want to say that I, I still think there's, I would still defend the validity of using a, a framework for technical analysis, assuming you had the right qualifiers around it and you were using it, you, you know, um, in a, in conjunction with a, a, a framework for uh, kind of a, a proper framework for macro analysis. Yeah. You gotta be careful sometimes with some of these things because, um, I actually like uh, Derek's idea that it looks like Martingale betting, betting, uh, data or, or um, movement because one, one of the problems with some of the technical analysis i imagine I, i'm just speculating here is um it can be a little bit like curve fitting um have you have you heard of uh wavelets before i have not or maybe you've heard of um fourier analysis you know you, you can familiar. make you can take yeah. any any time series any any signal and uh, decompose it into oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yes fre- yes yep yeah yep. pure frequencies yep just just yep. pure sine waves yeah and and if you put enough sine waves together you can you can make any any shape you like yep. arbitrary even a square wave if you have if you have infinite uh, infinite fundamental frequencies but um in image analysis uh, the I think I don't know how to pronounce the French Dobeshi's or Dobeshi's uh, wavelets became real powerful because they um, allow a lot more compression of information. Um, it, it's just more efficient for certain uh, compression or Fourier type analysis when you decompose a signal into into more simpler waves. And, and the wavelets are kind of little impulse things. They're like little, I don't know, I don't know how to describe them. Um, like, yeah, like 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 the smallest sort of um, Elliott wave there you'd have, and then you can have an, a bigger Elliott wave, and you can superimpose them on top of each other, and and if you have enough of them, 
you can build up any any stock market chart you like. Yeah. So all you're doing is is sort of fancy curve fitting or Fourier analysis. So um, that's why I was asking you to to go over this a little bit because a it's really interesting and fascinating and you know, but also b it's like I I do want to hear the story behind it. I I, I kind of intrigued to see if there really is anything to it and i think it does boil down to um market psychology and and anthropology but i just like someone to study that like from an objective sort of uh neutral point of view rather than someone who wants to confirm that it's true yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yep. yep um let's see yeah it's interesting stuff. i don't I'm, I'm working on i'm literally working on something while you guys we're talking here and i'm uh yeah which is well whatever i'm just gonna pull it up and hopefully it, it shows okay okay so you're aware of agent-based modeling right yeah, yeah right yeah okay hopefully this works guys if let, let me know in chat Actually, that's, that's one way you could get elliot ways you, you yeah. could build some psychological yeah. types from an agent yep. model yeah and see if you can actually generate Elliott waves. On, on my end, everybody, it's still showing that both me and Bijou are, I literally put together this frame um, while, while we've been talking. From my end, it shows that the audio is coming through <laughs> for both, both me and Bijou after I switched to this scene. So let me know if you're having audio issues and you can't hear Bijou or I. Uh, obviously, you'd be telling me that you can't hear me. But um, so I can still hear you. Uh, a, a guy named uh, Tim Gooding, who's worked with uh, uh, Steve Keen in the past, has built some very basic toy trader models that are agent-based models, right? And um, I I think they display the characteristics that you would expect. If you have certain agents in an economy, groups of agents in an economy working in such a manner that uh, that it makes sense that the output of those is a price pattern where the patterns that emerge over time, right? Well, you know, kind of what we visually see on the chart is, uh, and, and the fractal nature of those patterns is because of a complex system of various agents uh, that have... Uh, kind of defined predictable strategies that are at work to try and you know win the game right, um, right. and so that that is what uh, that is what Tim Gooding put together in, in a very simplistic way I think there are only three rules if you're unfamiliar with agent based modeling you create agents <laughs> you give them rules <laughs> and they play a game right I mean they you know they play yeah. they effectively play a game and, and agent based modeling some of the coolest things you can do is like uh you know watch bird flocking patterns based on just a few simple pr uh, yeah. parameters right uh right. but what tim gooding did is built this uh, toy trader model to show how i mean he's really just trying to show how you know uh how certain um uh, qualitative patterns yeah and, well what he was showing is that like uh economic inequalities that we see uh, are really oh, really are really are really just derived from some very basic um Th some very basic uh you know kind of human behavioral dynamics and same thing with price right? right that it's not so much a supply and demand dynamic but you know that, that it's really one of these behavioral dynamics that are uh, operating underneath R really fascinating uh really fascinating stuff and so he put together this toy model uh to kind of demonstrate that and he even has this like, cool three minute clip on youtube that is uh that is really interesting um and uh, effectively what, what happens is e each one of these agents has a handful of like uh, they, they're playing this trading game with these toys that they have and like i, I think uh i think what it is i think how it works is like it, it, you're, you're gonna make some trade with someone for the money that you have for the toy that they have and there are certain rules that determine if the if the trade can happen or not and um like you, you have to sell if you have more than five toys or something like that and uh yeah. yeah and then so what'll happen is but then there's kind of a randomization that occurs to determine what what type of strategy you're going to end up using and then if the person next to you or the person closest to you uh has a better strategy than you then you'll adopt their strategy right uh so so you get you know you get you get market dynamics right you get people looking mm -hmm. at what rich people are doing and, and mimicking them um, so I think it's a gist of, of what this toy model does, right? So, I mean, it creates a not, not super realistic understanding, but at least it creates agents that can be grouped <laughs> by the manner in which they operate. Yeah. Uh, 
And what you can do is you, you set the thing up and it creates these, uh, you know, these, these agents and then you run the, you run the simulation and we're going to speed it up here. And I, I wish I could make this thing bigger. I, I don't know how to make this average price is what, what we're, um, okay. is what we're, what we're watching. And what's really interesting is over time, what you'll see is the price pattern, the average price of these underlying toys follows this Elliott wave cycle, right? I mean, it follows the patterns that you see emerge. Um, did I just crash this? Or did I hit my total, total, I think my total iterations of, of <laughs> 3,000, of 3,000 finally hit. Um, I thought you could run this forever. Either way, y- you get this boom and bust cycle that you, uh, that you end up seeing. God, and I'm sorry if this is not showing up. Um, oh yeah, stop simulation at 3,000. Look at that. All right. We'll keep, yeah. we'll keep rolling. Um, so you get this price pattern that plays out that's very similar to the market. In fact, if you increase the money supply, you end up seeing something very similar. I think one of these has an ever increasing money supply. You end up seeing something that looks very similar to the stock market. If you don't increase the money supply, you end up seeing a chart pattern that's much more akin to like commodities uh, that, that always. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Got it. Anyway, my, my, my point would be that. I think from kind of a, a, a scientific theoretical standpoint, you can make the case that something like Elliott Wave is what is actually playing out, right? Uh, you know, that's market psychology that gives the look of the price chart that we see over time. Now, the long-term trend is determined by uh, the long-term trend is determined by the flows, right? The, the MMT right. framework. Right. Um, but the price pattern that emerges is because of all these different people playing the game. Right. right. Um, and so that, that would be my kind of my, my scientific theoretical base for why I think technical analysis has merit to begin with uh, is that it is the output of, of this complex system that has these agents uh, that are in it. Well, there you go. As, as someone didn't like talking to real people and doing, uh, you know, surveys, um, they could play around with these these types of models. Oh um, yeah. To see, oh yeah. To see if um, yeah, yeah. Do, do do some rigorous analysis. See, does it just look like an Elliott wave, or is there something a little bit more robust that you can say it definitely does go up, um, up in five, down in three, so forth. Although, does that does that model there that you're looking at there does that actually have different types of agents? I think there's like one. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's yeah, yeah. I think there's one. I. I there's uh well fuck, I wish I knew how to yeah. use this program. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean I, I think each agent has um yeah, I do. I think is what I what I, 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 do he, I think I he does population. Correct. Oh yeah, poor rich, blah blah blah, celebrities celebrities. <laughs> celebrities, turtles with his Honestly. book his book gives a full explanation of what he's doing. <laughs> his book I guess it sounds like he has got different yeah, yeah, different. Uh, yeah, content. yeah, different. What is it? Psychological types, essentially, is what he's saying. So that, that's uh, interesting. That's what, that's what I'd want to look at. Like, if I if I removed all the psychological types and made them neoclassicals, what I'd get essentially, I, I reckon, <laughs> just a speculation. What I'd get from this model would be just all neoclassicals. It'd be basically econophysics. Yeah, and, and the econophysics yeah. models you don't have any agents you just have asset swaps and the um and what you'd see is you still get inequality pareto distributions yep um and that's arises uh, that the interesting thing about that is that it arises just from um no government support for the poor yeah if you just this is everyone just swap assets and it's like random exchanges and and you sort of have some sort of temperature parameter to control it or, or whatever then you just will always get perito distributions you always get massive wealth and inequality the rich get richer the poor get yep. poorer yeah and that's just like almost no 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 markets really involved it's in completely the most abstract model you can get for for a market where you swap swap assets and stuff and so in that system you can create a gaussian normal distribution which is you know considered like fair fair distribution yep um if you have tax you just tax the rich and give it back to the poor like yeah 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 Yeah. 
Although I have to say on Twitter, there's there's the, there's a lot of interesting stuff from Stephanie Kelton and and others that um, pointing out, you know, really MMT. Uh, you don't you don't really want Robin Hood taxes because you don't, you don't need them. You, you can you can balance the economy in, in many many other ways if you understand MMT. But if you don't have a government and it's just the wild west, then then that's what the econo physics models uh, would suggest is, is just almost going to happen just by um, just the most general, the most abstract, abstract sort of, you know, anything that looks like a market is going to act like that if it doesn't have regulation. And so, and so, you probably, I don't think you get Elliott waves in those econo physics models because they're too simple. You don't have different agents. Correct. Yeah. So that's the that interesting thing. Yep. I want, I want someone yep. to look at is, is if you have these different psychological types, or, or I think what uh, Gooding is it? Tim Gooding, did you say? I think that was his name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- what he's got there is he's he's basically got different, you know, social classes or, or rich and poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebra- celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, well, that's all sort of interesting stuff. I do. Uh, uh, I, I want to tie this put in. Put my PhD onto that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's be. I think it's be your PhD assistants. I know. I know. Tim Gooding pushed into this quite a bit, um, and, and he did. He did have a YouTube channel for a while where he was pretty active, uh, kind of talking about a trader he made, a trader bot that he made based on uh, some of the some of the things that you know, he got into, but it died off. Um, never really caught on. Yeah, you need, uh, need a bit of a group of people working on it. This this is uh this kind of interesting to to tie this into something else that I'm I'm kind of interested in. I, I had put this video to watch kind of on my on the back burner. This will make sense. It's going to take a while to tell the story, but um, th- there's a video to tie this into another love of my life, Walt Disney World. Th- there was a video by uh, it was put put out a year ago by d- d- uh, a YouTube channel called Defunct Land. It's on the Fast Pass. I don't know if you're familiar with the Fast Pass system at Disney World. This became u- ubiquitous in, in theme park world, but eventually, essentially, you were able to get a, a ticket. Uh, it's kind of like a virtual queue. You got a ticket to come back at a later time, and you would effectively skip the line. You wouldn't have to wait two hours to ride your favorite ride. Uh, you know, they tell you to come right. back at 6 p.m. and then you'd be able to essentially walk on and you get in the Fast Pass lane, right? And um, and what's what's kind of interesting is uh, th- this thing took over and it, it became very popular and uh, every every theme park ended up using a, a form of this fast pass. And there was a big mm-hmm. debate that went on uh, in the in the theme park uh, amusement park world. Well, does you know does this fast pass actually make things better? Does it make everything worse for everybody? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, I have long just wanted, you know, I finally had all the free time in the world uh, to, to work on a project. This is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to solve this problem. And I, ironically, I knew this video came out and I just had never, um, I'd, I'd never watched the video, but I'd always thought, you know what can solve that problem is, uh, is uh, an agent-based model, right? I mean, that, right. <laughs> right? You can create your groups of people, uh, yeah. h- how they're going to experience a theme park, and then you create a theme park with a fast pass system, and you create a theme park that only has a queue, right? So a fast right. pass, you have a, a fast pass line and a queue line, and then you have just the queue line. And he did it in this video. He actually created an agent-based model <laughs> that had seven different oh, no. agents. Uh, gave them each, you know, their their randomized roles and all that sort of stuff. But each agent had their own uh, their own preferences, and then and then the 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 decisions they made during a day were all randomized, and you end up getting this distribution. And what he ended up finding is that, it, and this is where the this is where it's going to connect back to uh, to MMT and in the broader <laughs> you know, our broader focus yeah. here. This is what was really cool is the fast pass system ended up benefiting those who know how to exploit it. Okay, let me let me rephrase this. The fast pass system did end up creating longer lines as a whole, yeah. right? So the queue line did end up getting longer because of this fast pass system. So that was mm. that was confirmed. However, the amount of time each person waited in line was mm-hmm. shortened. So, okay. on average, you went from 3.5 rides a day for each guest at the theme park to 4.5 rides at the day at the end of the day right and when you go to the theme park your currency is your time right you want to get the most out of your theme park right so yeah. what what ended up happening though is the distribution of who got ah, to enjoy what yeah. change and this yeah this is where it's yeah. gonna this is where it's gonna touch back to mmt the people who understood the game right the, the 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 locals who understood the game right. and the people who were willing to research 
and exploit the game. They were the ones that were able to do more than anyone had ever been able to do before because they understood how to beat the game, right? Yeah. And it was the people who didn't know how to beat the game that actually got less out of the experience than those who know how to exploit the game. And the point I want to make to tie this all back to MMT (laughs) is that at the end of the day, it's a policy decision, <laughs> right? It, right. Yeah, yeah. Inequality at a theme park for being able to ride rides and and you know have fun on attractions is a policy decision of the Walt Disney Company, right? Yeah. They can make right. things equal where all people yes. have an equal opportunity to ride the same amount of rides. But in that instance, everyone's, you know, no one liked that system, right? Everyone was miserable under that system, right? Um, yeah. Or they can choose winners and losers, right? And so, yeah. but but it still is. The distribution of, in this instance, wealth being the amount of rides you get to ride uh, is a policy decision, right? The, the uh, yeah, yeah. To, to a certain extent, the inequality is a policy decision and that it's the rules that get set up that that you have to that govern the play that are going to determine right. the 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 inequality. Now, that's not to say that there is not still some spectrum of inequality that is just baked in because of that's just the natural way, right? Like it it's just it's a it's a it's a fluke of nature that I ended up with the IQ and the skills that I have and you ended up with the IQ and the skills that you had, right? That right. is is purely just naturally that is that is yeah. just nature determining things. right yeah. yeah yeah and that's not a policy so I'm not seeing that there's not that that yeah. doesn't exist right there are going right. to be winners and losers and that's just a natural phenomenon that's right but yeah the amount that any winners can win and the losers can lose and, and the way that that game plays and and a lot of the inequality that we see in the world around us is because of policy decisions. That's right. But so much of it gets attributed to just natural distribution, natural distribution of whatever, right? You know, whatever genetic uh, thing. But no, yeah. a lot of it is just because of the game that's played, and we can see that play out with agent-based modeling, right? Uh, I mean, right. It, it is a great, a great way to use agent-based modeling. So yeah, it is a good tool. Thing. If you've got an hour and like forty-two a- minutes uh, uh, to spare, or you know, half that, if you're willing to watch at double speed. It is a fascinating yeah. video if you are just into, uh, if you are just, even if you're just into understanding how, how dynamic systems play out. But right, that's my take for it. That's yeah, my that take for tonight. Good, <laughs> that's my take for it. <laughs> that's pretty pretty interesting stuff. I think, yeah, I think um, a lot of it makes sense. The, the thing of thing about what what you say is naturally occurring, and and what is policy is an, is a really interesting thing because. Um, in, in economics, it comes down to a lot of uh, a lot of power. Who who gets power? Like and so and, and it's a lot of time is involved in that because um, initially you might have a fa- fairly flat society. You know, like I'm thinking way back in the you know Stone Age or whatever, just because no one has the tools to. Um, oh yeah, amass, yeah, that makes sense. That amass makes sense. great power. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. and then when civilization with you know sentient people develops and then tools become available where people can uh, gain power yep. and oppress others then you've created uh, is is it natural you know that's the question maybe it yeah. doesn't even make yeah. much sense to call it natural but you have created a society now where um you've got in a sense artificial uh or unequal powered structures yeah and then but then when you all realize you know there's a hell of a lot of us peasants and there's not very many people with power. You can have revolts which happens throughout history. And then you get some sort of back to a little bit flatter structure. So that's when you get governments or in the old days, you know, the temple authorities or whoever. Um, and then, and, and now this brings us almost up to date. Like you can see that actually our, our period of life, our period of time in human history is still not mature. We, we still haven't matured as a, as an entire civilization. You know, hopefully we survive long enough to actually see some sort of maturity because we've got the governments, but they still don't have the right policies. So they can be uh, level the playing field, but not if there are pa- still powerful forces that are, you know, psychologically or otherwise, um, you know, other monopolists and oligarchs convincing people that, oh, no, it's better to have the quote-unquote natural power structures 
the natural ones where the rich, uh, you know, tell you tell tell us all what to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's I'm I'm pointing out that's not natural. It's an interesting thing that Roa Nora in the chat mentioned that it's like is is Pareto inherent or natural? In a way, Pareto distributions are natural if you've got um power like un unequal power but also if you've just got a random exchange of of uh, random exchange of assets you get you and a Pareto distribution is unavoidable it just already occurs you can you know you can you don't actually actually need an agent model for that you can just use statistical mechanics for that and you can you know uh, figure out what your partition function is and then just um, you and you can analytically show you get an exponential or or a Pareto power law uh, distribution in in um, distribution of assets, and so Douglas is right. So 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 then, but if you have a government, you have um, a it's like a collective. It's like having a bit of a collective um, power, a, a monopolist that is supposed to you know the proper role you you might say from from an MMT you know progressivist type perspective is to is to um, you know, eliminate the imbalances in society, the inequalities that are that are only natural if you believe that the powerful should be powerful. <laughs> if if you believe that just by being rich, you should be able to get the right to tell everyone else what to do. In other words, you you don't really have a moral society. You, you just have a um, what do you call it? Just a sort of feudalistic type of society. Anyway, that's my rant on the situation. I like it. I like it. I, I, I'd say I totally agree with you. You know that 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 uh, the distribution of wealth. If you have a government, the distribution of wealth becomes um, more of a policy decision than uh, well, it can be. It can, it can become be. more yep. of a policy yep. decision, but yep. but not if you're neoliberal. If you if you just want to give up your government power and give it over to the private market, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yep. you, you're just being yep. uh, abnegating your yep. so, proper social yep. responsibility. I, I'd say, which is kind of interesting. Did you hear that? Did you see the? Um, is, it, is it in the Congress or the Senate? I think it was your Congress because I saw a couple of people I think I recognised, but they had a they had a um, a hearing the other day on um, artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, yeah. So you tweeting some of that stuff. Out. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, some you know, good, some bad. It was it was quite interesting. It's a cu couple of the things uh, that you were tweeting out were pretty uh, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, or not not uh, yeah. uh, impressive. Not the I mean, it's not, they weren't unimpressive, but yeah, they were intriguing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, so so I I don't know. I think I'll give the chat if anyone in the chat didn't um, listen into into that. I guess it was on C. Uh, cbs or something but or um probably on c-span as well but um let's let's the initial just but let me let me let me just very, let me let me jump chat real quick because uh i i do want to hit the ai okay. I, it's, it is important it is important okay ty, ty did bring up a question though uh uh is is inequality a structure of how the system evolved or has the inequality um because of policy choices to play to the apply that have been applied to that system or structure oh uh, yeah both. Uh, yeah hold on Oh yeah, go for it. Get that out there. Oh, satisfying. Oh yes. Ooh, Nike. Um, geez, oh, Pete's man. I might, I might have to take a break for uh, thirty seconds here. Um, fuck. <laughs> Get that sneeze out. Sneezy. Because <laughs> I'm cracking sneezy. up. I can't even sneeze right now. Of the seven <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing too much. Um. All right, do this. We're uh, yeah, Ty, you make a really good point. I I agree. I, I, um, <laughs> I did. Yeah, the lights are going on. Um, I, I I gotta take I gotta take a minute. Why, why don't you? I, I don't want to miss too much what you're saying, uh, Bijou. But okay. uh, so don't go too deep into the weeds quite yet, because okay. I I even I need the the refresher. But I'll be okay, I'll man. be right. Uh, I'll be right back in just okay. a second. I gotta. Okay. Oh, God, give me a break. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. That's not it. That's not it. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, while, while Douglas is gone, uh, maybe I could just do a quick... Uh, there's, a, there's a few other things that um, are not related to AI and uh, 
what, what we were just discussing the in, inequality i was i was thinking okay first firstly if you were late to the live stream today um i mentioned earlier uh the geothermal energy company that uh, josh from the chat uh, mentioned last week so um, if you're interested in you know energy policy and, and advocacy for clean energy uh yeah please uh, check it out um it's really interesting stuff the technology that they're using for deep well drilling um i think i've got the uh a link for it so i'll, I'll stick the link in the chat it's a there's a box article on this um, so if you're into that area of advocacy, uh, take a look at it. I don't know how the geological stability goes with that, whether there's sort of risk in it, like fracking. But I mean, it's just geothermal, so you're not really you you you're pulling up a few pollutants, but you inject inject stuff back down. It's um pretty clean, I think. And uh, the the brochures say that you know they can produce almost a hundred percent of of our needs. You don't have to be a major tectonic area activity country to do this that's that's the whole point of this new technology is you can drill really deep wells as uh, pretty much anywhere in the world you just have to have a you know decent site where you you've prospected and there there is some geothermal close to the surface but it can be really really deep so you could do it somewhere like in the middle of australia i, I imagine um I'm that was one thing and then the, uh, yeah and then another one was uh nathan tankers he's not in my good books He's not in my good books. He 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 writes. He's a he's a pretty good nerd, pretty good MMT nerd. But um, if you uh, if you listen to some of his recent interviews, he he did one with one of the market type watch podcasts. I forget what the name of it was. But oh man, I was so disappointed because he he gets asked to introduce MMT. You know what is MMT? Because he's a you know uh, in in the policy space circles and and law and commerce. He's a or at least central banking policies analysis. He's he's fairly well read, I guess you could say, and uh, and he's going over the history of MMT, and you know basically kind of starts with Minsky, and then um, Hyman Minsky, and then Randy Ray, and then that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, he did not one mention of Warren Mosler at all. It's like he deleted him from existence. So, <laughs> um, that's that's my little uh story on that I was, I was pretty disappointed in nathan for that no i'm not sure why he didn't mention warren but to me it's like well, you don't have mnt without warren he was the one that put randy ray onto it and stephanie calton because they wanted to disprove warren they wanted to show him he was mad that they only got on they they only became mnt as well post keynesian plus mnt because of because of warren and and bill mitchell because Bill Mitchell did his sort of independently of Warren. So man, whenever you come across MMT, I, I don't I, I feel like I'm a bit of a, a bit of a turning into someone. I like okay, in science and physics, I usually don't care much about the history. But I do care about academic citation. You know, if someone has a good good idea, I, I always give them credit and um you know, I, I don't think I've ever had a, much of an original idea myself. The only original idea with topological four geons I had in, in about 1996, um, it was original. But I read, but then I read up a new scientist of all places, which is like you know, just uh, popular science write-ups. I, I came across this guy at Warwick University in the UK who who had this exactly the same idea that I had, but he had already done it. We, we just finished a PhD, defended a PhD on it. And that that's the only ever original idea I've ever had. Probably the only great original idea I ever will have. And uh, yeah, you know, I was completely marginalised physics. You know, no one's really interested in it. But it was a pretty cool kind of episode in the life. But but if you're gonna talk about the history of MMT, ah, damn it, yeah, you, you have to you have to give credit to Warren, please. I so do. Uh, that's I... why that, that's why Nathan was not in my good books. It was pretty heinous. I do like the uh, a lot of people have been tweeting back at me as well as of late saying uh, it's it's now actually uh, instead of modern monetary theory it's uh, Mosler monetary theory that uh, <laughs> there are now two MMTs 
in, in part because of the interest rate thing, right? I mean, so many people are are right, right. still hung up on on the interest rate yeah. thing. Uh, they are in yeah. the MMT crowd, but still, I think pay a little too much uh, homage to uh, the homage. neoclassicals with um, with uh, with the interest rate thing. And I, I, I still, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not, so, I'm Derek. I'm not saying that. Warren's an economist. That's an insult. Yeah. I'm saying he's, a, he's an engineer and a, yeah, whatever yeah. he is. He's an original thinker. He's a, what do you call it? He's a visionary, <laughs> but, very, but pretty down to earth guy too. Yeah. That's the best part, man. He's, he's that's the best guy. part. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, God. and you know, I mean, if you're talking about Karl Marx or Warren Mosler, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to offend people, but who's the genius here? I, like, like Karl Marx didn't come up with anything original. His, all the class analysis of capitalism, uh, which is kind of touches on what we were just talking about, about inequality, is, you know, completely correct, true, good analysis. But it, Marx, that wasn't original thinking of Marx. He was just taking what, what had already been in the, um, in the intellectual ether, so to speak. And then what did he do? He analysed capitalism a little bit. You know, showed some dynamics there, falling rate of profit, um, labor theory of value, which was all wrong. So, I mean, <laughs> so I mean, it was interesting. It was a really interesting book or, or body of work that Marx wrote and um, very important, I think, in terms of history and understanding and class struggle. But, you know, the, the interesting thing that people latched on to, Marx got wrong, you know, the currency being gold, blah, blah, blah. And the good thing that he got was already understood, but with with Warren Mosler, it's like he he really came up with some you know, pretty important things that people had either forgotten from history or um, you know were a correct understanding of the monetary system, and, and especially and I don't think Warren even himself emphasizes this enough in terms of the origins of the MMT, although. In terms of his analysis of the framework, he he, he always mentions this, is that you got to understand that the massive difference of moving to a floating exchange rate. Yes, if you keep speaking yeah. in terms of fixed exchange rates. Oh my God, it's it's, it's, oh. it's just the gold standard type by any other means. It's just it's, it's a policy decision, right? It's a policy to say you fix the exchange rate. It's like like it's... a gold standard, but damn it, you you got to understand it's so different. The d- dynamics completely change when you go to a floating exchange rate. It is, and, and it is, really, Warren Warren was in a gen- in a sense a genius to understand that. It, it, you might say it's not. Oh, you know, I could have understood that too, but you know, I didn't. Warren got there first, so give him the credit. <laughs> it's my it's my biggest pet peeve, and I get it. Like uh, you know, like, like you know, my detractors on Twitter and the trolls on Twitter and everything. They're gonna they're gonna post Argentina or Venezuela, y- 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 you know that they're mmt but listen mmt uh <laughs> begins with a i'm sorry you you cannot have progressive policy um you cannot have uh, pro- progressive policy uh, decisions from an mmt framework if if you're not on a floating exchange rate right and, and so yeah for, for all intents and purposes, all the policy space is dressed. Yeah, for, for all intents and purposes, the minute um, a country borrows in a currency that's not their own, right, or, or issues debt in a currency that's not their own, that they have to then go out into the marketplace and obtain to uh, uh, to pay off that debt, they 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 cease being in the same uh, policy pool as the u.s right yeah. uh and, and i would say the same thing if the u.s all of a sudden started issuing debt in a currency that's not its own right you you, you, yeah. you might as well go back on the gold standard at that point yeah and the that's framework right. for analysis changes i mean it's, changes. It, it completely Effective changes the interest rates changes yeah yeah mm. um policy space changes so 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 if, if you're an mmt detractor and you're trying to say that oh just print money you, you know high interest rates uh, you know, you know, stop inflation. Look at, uh, you know, look at look at the disaster that uh, that uh, Venezuela, Argentina is. Again, th- these countries have massive debt loads in U.S. dollars, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and that changes the dynamic. That, that it is it is absolutely apples and oranges. The minute 
a country yeah. is uh, is issuing debt outside of its own currency. Yeah. Um, particles, anti-particles even. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, look, idiots, idiots uh, like the Twitter trolls obviously aren't going to understand that. But uh, it's it's really it gets a little gnawing when um, <laughs> like e- PhD economists, they were some goofball, just an absolute asshat uh, on Twitter earlier. Uh, who was saying, you know, sorry, sorry, MMT, you're wrong. I, you know, I, I mean, they, they just, they, they just, they, they should, uh, I don't know, they should know better, but whatever. I, yeah. I mean, the nice part is, as I tweeted out today, um, the one thing, the one thing that keeps me, uh, you know, not, not terribly angry is, I mean, look, MMT allows you to just print alpha, right? Like <laughs> MMT gives you such an edge and, um, you know, every once in a while I hear back from my patrons and, and they'll let me know, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm really kicking ass. And that feels good. I, I mean, that, that feels good mm. that there's a small group of us, uh, that understand this, that are active traders that understand how to take advantage of, of this. And, you know, to, to a certain extent, the economic debate, I, well, I should actually say, I should put it this way. Unfortunately, the policy decisions we're making that are based on an incorrect analysis and incorrect framework uh, for analysis is tragic because there is uh, almost immeasurable suffering that is occurring because of it. That doesn't have to be occurring, right? Um, yeah, we can afford because we have the real resources. Healthcare for all, right? That that, that is that is yeah. not something that the U.S. is incapable of getting into right. with some sort of without you know some sort of economic calamity, right? Um, right. Th- th- these are things that are obtainable in our modern society. Right. Uh, 2000 years ago, clean water for everyone um, might be a discussion that there just might be, you know, right. there might be, there might not be the capacity to do, you know, the real resources exactly. to do something like that. No one yeah. would think that that's not the case now in, Correct. Yeah. right, in, in a, in a developed nation, right? That, that should be a base, right. right? I mean, it should be a base case that that is just something that exists, right? Uh, right. and, and yet, he, you know, here we are because of neoclassical policies still debating if healthcare should be, oh, I, know. I, don't, I don't want to use the word right, uh, but if, if healthcare yeah. isn't something that can be provided universally is just, um, something that we say, yeah, we're going to make that a priority, uh, in our society. So that does make me, trust me, that really does get under my skin. But at the end of the day, the nice thing that, you know, helps me sleep at night without getting too angry is these goofballs are just losing money, right? I mean, <laughs> if, if they are investing at all, uh, and they're investing against MMT principles and they're sitting in cash because they think high interest rates, uh, are really just going to finally put it to the market. So they're just waiting for the market to drop for this buy, you know, perfect buying opportunity. And yet markets have been, have been absolutely roaring since interest rates have been pushing higher they're out you know they're out money and that makes me feel happy so that is, that is <laughs> not, Are you not, a, not only do i have their money but <laughs> i i also i have some shot and freida that i sip yeah, on it's served warm and uh, coats the throat quite nicely <laughs> yeah look look you know i'm I, I'm a humanitarian but you know if, if people are, are going to willingly be stupid then yeah I'm I'm not opposed to you taking the money off him. Hang on, I'm just gonna open the door. Um, my daughter is just. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now hang on. I gotta shut the door. Back in a sec. sec. You're good. You're good. Okay. Um, Derek, I think it was. I think it was you. I, I think you even posted some really some really good research recently. Was, was right. it? Sorry. <laughs> was it you that posted some stuff? Uh, some charts on. Uh, oh, miss. Like like Venezuela or something something Argentina. Maybe I'm thinking of something wrong, but even one of the countries, maybe it was Turkey, one of the countries has finally seen st- some stability um, in, in their currency. Are those uh, high interest rate countries? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't remember which one it was. I, I, I was saying, I saw a tweet and I thought it was Derek maybe who posted it. Um, yeah. It was showing that, that... Turkey and Argentina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, cr- the trouble is there is, is the corruption. It's like, yeah, you know. Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so having an election soon would be interesting. I think they have to have a runoff, right? I think that's how it ended up. Uh, oh, right, ended up going. Yeah. So, Th- Thailand. I got friends in Thailand. They had an election. They had just elected the first, um, like People's Party government. Got a bit okay. of a landslide. They need what's, like to make up. What's the People's Party? 
Uh, well, you know, you basically say they're progressive, so they're like, I don't know, maybe the New Zealand Labour Party, you know, not not as bad as UK <laughs> Labour. Uh, so, you know, more um, open-minded, progressive than uh, than your Democrats, for sure. Um, more like maybe the Canadian, um, uh, what is it? Hi, what's the Canadian party? Uh, I, I don't have the, a slightest um, clue, man. Sorry, I, I am the most... Uh, <laughs> what, what do they call them? New, uh, yeah, I forget. Oh God, yeah. They're not. They're not. They're not in power at the moment. But they're. Um, uh, yeah, New Democrats or something like that. NDP um, is what uh, Josh put in. Yeah, NDP. Yeah, okay. yeah, NDP. Okay. Something, something a bit like that. So it's interesting. You know, they've got views about the the monarchy over there, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's what they are. But you know, it's a matter of like, uh, can they last a month without a coup? Huh, yeah, military yeah, coup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never really know. But my my concern, but, uh, my concern always, whenever you know, progressive progressive uh, political parties take over in, in any nation, is they just simply do not have right. They, they have a policy direction that they want to take. The new Democrat Party is what uh, what they're saying in chat. They have a policy direction that they want to take. Uh, but they simply do not have an economic structure that can allow them to take those policy decisions yeah. without um, without major disruptions economically. And, and obviously, a lot of countries are so dependent on uh, the IMF and, and what have you uh, that they're never going to sway from the box well, the box that will give them the support if they absolutely they need it. In. They, they all, cave in that's, to the uh, rich donors because yep. you know they think, oh, we have to get money off the rich people. Yep. yep. So, so you get all the banks sort of yep. starting to get uppity and like, oh, well, you know, if you do this, we're going to withdraw from, you know, whatever. And 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 the progressive government policymakers just don't understand that they are the ones holding holding the gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. Once once they understand that, then then they could get some progress, even even in Thailand. Um, you know, but with the military there, it's pretty dicey. It's not as bad as Myanmar, but you know, it's like every ten years you can almost count count on a military coup just because the military military generals over there get very wealthy. It's a great career. You go into the army, <laughs> yeah, work your way up to be a general, and you can be a millionaire in US dollars terms. Or I don't know what it is in baht. I guess it's times twenty or something. Yeah, probably quite a lot. I think. Um, yeah. And and there, you know, you're set for life. You've got all these properties and businesses that you're running as a general, you know, they need, they need to find a few wars to fight to keep the generals busy. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Good thing the U.S. Like, doesn't have that issue where we just uh, conjure up wars to keep us busy. Oh, uh, yeah, lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the U.S. <laughs> just stays out of those sort of those sort of things. jeez. Uh, yeah, anyway. All right. Um, AI, AI hearings. Yeah. Have some other yeah. Let's topics? do AI hearings and then we can wrap things up for the night. We're into, we're into hour three. Ah, yeah. If you are new here, guys, we, we've, this is uh, some of the high, highest holding concurrent viewership. We had a huge spike in viewership when I stepped away. Um, and uh, Bijou, <laughs> Bijou got, got, got the reins all by himself. And now we're back down to normal viewership. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if you are new here, we get we go a little off the rail when we finally hit hour three, divert from uh, from normal MMT talk to whatever the whatever the the heck we feel like. So uh, our hour three is here. Uh, our favorite topic of 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 topic of du jour is uh, has been AI. So there was an AI hearing. What did what did God? I can't watch. I can't watch hearings because I can't listen to yeah. some of these. I mean, every once in a while, there there is one salient clip from anything where there's actually uh, like a, yeah. a hint of brain cells in these things, <laughs> right? Uh, they get high level briefs from experts, so they they do say a few interesting things. Yeah, but it's like yeah. um, it's just uh, parroting what the experts are saying. Because none of the AI tech nerds, none of them know about MMT. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. So the constant thing that you hear, so so they had some good opening remarks, and people were pointing out the correct, I think, the correct um, problems that do require some regulation. Um, and you know, it's really it was really interesting that the Congress uh, representatives were saying we got it wrong on social media. You know, we we got it wrong. 
mm, you mm. know our bad um things got out of control um could have done with more regulation well it wasn't good enough to say to the private social media providers you you go regulate yourself boys i'm sure you can do it <laughs> it's like the mmt take on that would be that you know you can't let banks regulate themselves and you can't let um customers uh discipline the banks either mm -hmm. like discipline on the on the on the uh, liability side does not work and history proves it yep that's another warren moslerism yep and um and so and and if you're going to have regulations here's another thing that will come up if you're going to have regulations you got to make them simple uh easy to enforce in other words so that's a few things that i want to cover like so the first thing would be what did they get right i think they got it right that 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 if ai does advance as, as rapidly as it is you've got a um a problem with power being concentrated in the hands of a few and not democratized uh for the many so that was one good thing they got right but then the main thing they got wrong, and okay, I watched about two hours of it or so, but, okay. but I had to turn off after that because okay. it was like 4 a.m. my time. They got the jobs thing wrong. They were, yeah, you know, yeah, I saw that. Pulling part. your hair yeah. out about jobs. Oh, yeah. all the jobs are yeah. going to go away. And a few of them, I think Sam Altman, maybe maybe one of the others, they, they got it a little bit right, like saying, well, history shows that um, we always find other jobs for people to do yeah. whenever technology yeah. Yeah. produces exactly. a greater productivity. It's yeah. never been a problem yeah. in the past. Why will it be now? But then um, one of the Congress people, and I think Gary Marcus, one of the academic experts, pointed out that AI is so different that you can't yeah. rely on history. For yeah, that. which is a fair, which okay, is a potentially I'm, I'm fair agree. assessment. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a pretty fair statement. No, no, no technology. No one. Yeah. No, no technology yeah. that we've ever created has been superior to our intelligence, right? It's I, our intelligence. I, I mean, yeah. Cognitive it, tasks. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. I, I mean, obviously, supercomputers can do computing better, but you wouldn't call that superior to intelligence. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but my AI, pocket calculator was better than me. But AI, computing. yeah. But AI gets, gets very close to, and will continue to get close to just raw human intelligence. Yeah. yeah. Behavioral. Yeah, behavioral behaviorally anything behavior that's moving atoms around eventually you know we can get machines to do it better than us it's just a point of logic yeah so so the point about the jobs is that it makes humans freer up to do less work for the same pay <laughs> because you know an, an mmt analysis was completely missing yep so i was i was astounded because i know that congress had been briefed on mmt and i know they've got a resolution saying mmt is highly dangerous <laughs> <laughs> you know which i think the gop voted on uh yeah so officially mmt is highly dangerous but the point is is that you know obviously if you have an mmt understanding you see that there's never going to be any any jobs problem the jobs or employment story is about <laughs> unspent income it's not nothing to do with automation automation is you know help is freeing people up to do better things like maybe you could work one hour a day instead of Eight, eight hours a day and and have the same pay so it's a it's a regaging of how we use the currency if you have to build massive new server farms um you know chewing up a whole lot of electricity to get ai um you know de democratic for everyone then you know that's a that's a that's a technical <laughs> issue that you have to worry about but it doesn't it's not a job story it's not it's not going <laughs> to it doesn't need to put anyone's employment under threat unless the government chooses to chooses to keep people unemployed and use an unemployed buffer of labor so they they totally just don't get that one so a lot of the discussion was a bit a bit in the wrong area and then um what was the other point oh yeah so the the lady montgomery from microsoft i think pointed out yes please regulate us was was my that would be my yeah. summary of, of yeah. what she said and and we we, um, we need no a, one we, was really yeah we need a moat and you can uh yeah by the way yeah. uh hey zeus you just won the live stream tonight <laughs> <laughs> quote i remember when red scooters replaced walking made life easier chris christie <laughs> that's fucking brutal man it's a great one <laughs> uh, uh, all right Jesus. so the the microsoft person says please 
Uh, please regulate us. Please regulate us Which because means means regulate our competitors. Exactly, exactly, stay, exactly, stay exactly, and uh, exactly the best the best I mean, way no, to I get mean, a monopoly. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So we can retain our monopoly because because it's already leaking out. As, yeah, as the Google memo showed it into the free software community yep. is is now got their hands on. Yeah. Basic models. Yeah, you so, can uh, you can only trust us monster corporations to do yeah, what's right for society. The, the yeah, ones. yeah. The the individual citizens are just gonna are just gonna let this run amok. Uh, I mean, the good news but is the, the, the good news is is that these models are what 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 OpenAI did with ChatGPT is really just take a risk on wasting a bunch of time on large language models that no one thought would work. Everyone knew right. what a large language model was. I mean. The, the, the concept of these things and the transformer uh, structure that is yeah. used to build them has been around for 10 years. I, I, I mean, right. and, and for the last five years has been really refined to work well. Um, so it's not like, it's not like the knowledge isn't out there. Right. I mean, the, the, right. <laughs> there's no, everyone who's got uh, a couple hundred bucks uh, in an Amazon account or a G I mean, anyone who has a physical GPU that has some uh, tensor units on it, can run these and make these models. I mean, it might take time, right? But it's too late, right? I mean, that it's <laughs> it's not it, it, in one sense everything that 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 needs to be known to make a productive AI model is already known. Uh, it's just about it's just about refining the way in which you get the best outcome uh, and ensuring your data is as clean as possible. Right. I, 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 it's data cleaning. Yeah. yeah right. I mean, quality. I mean, th th that is going to be a huge effort. Yeah. You know? But and the free software community have a big advantage. Yeah, there, yeah, because they've got tens of thousands of people. That, yeah, exactly. That they, they, they can clean the data and do it. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is just this stuff is just right for crowdsourcing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's uh, obviously the computational uh, strength. If 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 uh, graphics cards are you know going to continue to follow Moore's law, right? I mean, let's just say there's there's the the Moore's law, the growth of uh, what you can get out of uh, out of um, the, the current units that run these AI models. Uh, you, you know, you, we can squeeze out a ton of computational power to build uh, models that we maybe never thought were possible. Um, but the structures are there for for uh, essentially all the learning that we would want. It's it's just a matter of 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 time and resources to to really narrow in on the hyperparameters and the narrow in on cleaning the data. So, um, yeah. Look on the regulation side. I mean, I mean, I think I think they they got it right uh, anyway. Despite despite those uh, okay. Microsoft people, because because they do recognize there are some dangers, um, especially in terms of distorting democracy. Yeah, and so. Um, but they might get it a bit wrong by by actually you know uh, clamping down too much on the open source free software community. That that might be a mistake. But but you but can't. They, but you can't. It's, it's too like it's too late. That's I you, guess that's my point. I don't know. Yeah. It, well, you could make certain things illegal and, and force them underground or something. I don't. I don't know. But but the point is is that I don't think they quite got the um, idea that you got to. Okay. So 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 this is how it happened. So Montgomery says, "Yeah, please, please regulate us." And then, and one of the um, people on the panel said, "Yeah, but uh, no." One of the congressmen said something. I forget what it was now, but they almost got it. They they almost got the idea. Yes, uh, we sh we should be regulating you because we we got it wrong with social media. But you know, we we need help to understand how to regulate you so they almost got it they almost got it because it's no good asking microsoft how to, how to yeah, how to. they got to come up with it yeah. themselves and they got to come up with the you know warren mosler type well if you banking. can if you can carve you out a mono if you can carve can out do. a monopoly for me i'll ensure that yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. good hands yeah. Yeah. Um, how many donations have you got next general election time so i i i've got a i've got a couple thoughts the, the first one is on the job side, right? And and I, okay. I, I don't think it's uh, <laughs> AI going to let me live so I can help it understand the Bible. Um, that's pretty good. Okay, let let me uh, let's go. And, and and I think you can draw a line back to today from where I want to take us, right? And and I, this is not a thought experiment that I think uh, is happening enough. But let's say we are finally at the utopia point, right? Let's say we finally have AI so amazing that it knows how to gather 
any resource it wants from the entirety of the universe, right? Grab it <laughs> and uh, go produce everything we need on the on the on the dark side of the moon. Ship it back to our planet, and so there is you know there, there's no detriment to to our um, environment, mm-hmm. and we have essentially an unlimited production of any anything that could make us happy, right on, on Earth, right. Um, so it's, it's a pure utopia. Now I, I, I know, you know, we're at least 50 years away from that, but l- yeah, l- but happiness expands to fit the space available. I, I'm just saying, I, what I'm trying to say, I, B- I, Bijou, I, I, I understand yeah. you're going to, you're going to say that like that we will always have jobs need, right. And, and I'm not trying to argue against that. What I'm trying to say is for anything that we could produce, it can be produced. And we have, okay. we have AI automation doing it for us in a way that our environment isn't impacted at all. Right. And so my, my thought is, we have that point. What kind of economy does Earth have when that happens, right? What kind of economic system do we have in place? What kind of political system do we have in place, right? What would be the ideal economy and uh, political systems that we would want? And I, I think if you can take that, I, I, I don't think it's unrealistic to draw that back to where we're at today, Right. Like if that's the future we want, how do we draw that back to 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 today? And how would we build an economic and political system that would distribute? Distribute. Yeah, we've got all the resources to 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 make everyone's life on earth today pretty comfortable. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Right. I mean right. We're very close to that today, right? And it's very easy to see. That well, you know, we, we you know the the limits then would be if there is any potential risk to uh, you know shipping the stuff back in or anything to the to the environment, you know that that needs to be a guardrail we put up and right, you know that, that's yeah. how we would distribute that, right? You, you know, we'd make sure maybe it does maybe there is some time that it takes for these bots to build the stuff. You know, it it, it might take a. Uh, um, you know, a couple years to, to get some of the resources off the planets and, and, and Alpha Centauri, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, those, those might be some constraints. Um, so that, that would be kind of the, 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 the thought experiment I would have. And, and you'd build an economy that looks very similar to what MMT already, <laughs> already, you know, kind of, um, yeah, optimized our, our, policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opt- exactly, exactly. Uh, and so, from from that perspective, um, I, I I think that the fear over AI taking jobs is so misplaced. I mean, we we would all, uh, we, so you know, we, we would obviously yeah. a- agree that no, man, this is going to free up a ton of time for people to do things that are going to make yeah. other people's lives more enjoyable and, and yeah. more fulfilling, right? I, I mean, that, I mean and that and that's even if you take Rowan Orr's view that maybe not so bullish on AI because. I mean, you know, you can you can project ahead just with normal AI, A, AGI. I don't think even AGI. I think what you want is specialized AI. So you don't I want. I, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Because what the hell uses general intelligence? I, I agree. It's going to be you know, I agree. A, mod, a, a pretty bad chess player. Or, yes. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you want specialized AI no, I, that I, solves really difficult and, tasks. And actually, that's where I, I mean. That's actually where I think uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we should be pushing AI is in specialized cases, because I think that's the place where it's immediately applicable, right? Like, um, yeah. obviously, everyone who has a career is an expert at what they're doing, right? I, I mean, anyone who's been successful in their career and has done it for a long enough has expertise in whatever it is their career is in. And so they are... They, 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 if they can get the tools of model building and AI to, to build Dude. AI for them, right? Dude, I, I mean that I, I am in a, I am yeah. a perfect use case for that because oh, damn, I, I'm I, a use case too. I, I number, build of AI, times I, yeah. a number of times I've tried to use Chat GPT, it, it it just cannot do what I want to do. Speaking of that, speaking of which, do you know what I've been? Do you know what I've been doing? AI I solving my problems. Do you know? Do you know what I've been doing? No, you had a great <laughs> outro last week, man. It was pure AI. Nah. Fuck. Uh, it, it was it was our it was our it was our it was our highest viewed outro. <laughs> um, uh, do you know what I started to do? Speaking of which, uh, you got to send me one. You got to send me uh, tonight the uh, the updated uh, 
uh, Python script we wrote for me. So Bijou writes these like super elegant Python scripts, great code, uh, probably runs like, like 50 times faster than anything I could ever run. Right. And Bijou, you're going to puke when I start doing this, but you know what I've been doing so mm -hmm. I can make sense of what, uh, what is actually, what is actually, I don't know. Okay. you're feeding, you're feeding my <laughs> stuff back into Back I, into Copilot. I put it, I put his <laughs> I've been putting his scripts into uh awesome. into chat GPT and I'm like, hey, can you spit this out so it works step by step in a Jupyter notebook so I know what's going on? Yeah. And it spits totally. it back out for me. <laughs> oh man, you just saved me heaps of hours of work trying to coach you. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. It is fantastic for me because now I can go and goof off thinking about AI and other stuff instead of coaching you. <laughs> that's great man. it's doing it man it's doing I'm not, it i'm not offended at all you should you should definitely do that more often and it really did <laughs> it really did help you built me a script for uh the daily treasury statement stuff and I, and I was really just struggling with some of it like i got the gist but it just right. some of it didn't make just sense yeah. um and so uh yeah, it, it started spitting it back out to me, and 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 I was able to start doing it step by step in a Jupyter notebook. And I'm like, ah, I think I get what's going on here. I, I see what I see what his genius is doing. Um, so anyway, I, I, yeah, cool man. Yeah, so specialized AI and all that sort of thing, and uh, the regulations should be, you know, just tell the companies what they can do. Don't don't have a whole list of things that you they can't. Can, yeah, enforce. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that, but like you say, I think guardrails are also a good idea. I, I do I do have another maybe objection to any uh regulation whatsoever. And and I, I I think the potential dangers for AI are so radical, so unobserved by what we could even guess today, right? Uh that any sort of regulation to stop the danger from what we saw, say with social media, is just something that we're not going to be able to know ahead of time, right? Like we're not going to know what the threat is until the right. I mean, it would have been it would have been pretty darn hard to guess in two thousand and nine, right? So Twitter is a year or two old at this point to understand that we would have a president that would weaponize Twitter to try and start a. Um, you, you right. start riots at the Capitol, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and <clears throat> so the what, what I would what I would say is, I think, unlike social media, AI has the tools and capacity already built into it to defeat the risks of AI. Like in other words, you just got to let it run. Um, it, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. No, I mean, no. I mean, okay. Gotta, yeah, I mean, you you can. Yeah, yeah. You got to You got to You got to have some sensible regulations, as you do with with anything that can that can uh, potentially be monopolized. But as, but you see, the regulations have to be not to protect the monopoly so much, but yeah. to um, democratize it. And and that does require because it goes back to our early discussion of um, Pareto distributions, how how inequality arises. Um, from lack of regulations or from regulations that favor the the monopolies and don't don't democratize yeah i mean you can have the regulations completely backwards if you if you want if you wanted to so i think i think the regulate i think it's really important they're having these hearings and doing all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. but um it was an interesting point I, I don't know if anyone else in the chat has come up with any good questions there probably have there but, ty, um, ty just ty Darby's just wants his ai wife uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, when, when large language models finally meet like open world, uh, like open world video games where the NPCs are ran on large language models and have, you know, some autonomy to, oh, right. right. To, to engage in any way they, they want to. And then you pair that with like voice activation and oh, that could be amazing and VR, right. All in one. Oh, yeah, geez. It's, 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 VR it's, makes me dizzy. Not into that, but you yeah, need, to, you, need to, you, you need, you uh, need, immersion. You need uh, you need to do like teleportation moving as opposed to um, locomotion moving, and it won't make you dizzy. Uh, as someone who gets oh, really? very yeah, as someone who gets very dizzy. Uh, if you do what's called teleportation, where uh, teleportation, where instead of like you're actually moving through the world, it just blinks you to the next spot, um, then, then you won't get dizzy. Uh, it blinks you to the next spot. Okay, sounds all right. I, I do get I do get um you know, no, uh, not nausea. What is it? Um, yeah, like emotion sickness. Yeah. 
No, yeah, I get the other. I get another thing. I get vertigo if I oh, have yeah, yeah, headphones yeah. on yeah. too long. Yep, yep, yep. I can't. I can't cover up my ears too long. There. Yeah. I take. So, a... But 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 I'm not so much into gaming. Anyway. No, no, yeah. I'm well, you a, you will be. I'm more of an outdoors, authentic kind of. You know. Oh, but um, you can get such a more authentic experience indoors with a VR headset than you can. <laughs> Listen, in VR, in VR, girls like, actually talk to me, man. Jeez, you know, this is far more authentic. <laughs> yeah, well, um, authentic virtual reality. Actually <laughs> virtual reality. <laughs> god. Oh, my God. So, um, All right, get us back on track, BJ. Derek, Derek is trying to get a rise out of me with J, JavaScript greater than Python, but, you know, Mojo is better than everything. Watch out! Watch out for Mojo when it gets released, uh, Derek. It'll be amazing. Python is just much better than any of those other Java stuff. Um, it's 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 good for rapid development. Chess and minds. Yeah. D- Derek, what's your uh, what's your Another what's chess. what's your Elo and chess? So, any uh. I've, I've I've played a few. I've, other... played, I've played a few. Uh, a few people I've met on uh, through through MMT yeah. macro trade. <clears throat> hit, hit me up on uh, chess.com. I've, if you're on chess.com, let me know and I'll. I'll, I'll add oh, here's, you as a friend. here's another thing. Here's a question for you. Um, so it was it was an interesting little exchange. Um, what does fourteen hundred mean? Ah, uh, that means it's pretty decent. Yeah. 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 Nice. yeah try go. You got to try go. It's a superior game. It's pretty cool. Also, when you're learning Go, you should uh, check out some of the Korean uh, or Japanese, I think, Korean t- television commentary stuff. You can, you can get them on YouTube. It's, uh, it's pretty hilarious, pretty funny, fun stuff to, to watch. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, for the AI hearing, just to wrap this up, I think, unless you've got something else on it, um, there was a moment where um, they were asked by the, the committee you know what were the dangers they thought, and I think Sam Altman mentioned jobs. He he was you know worried about the jobs, and you could tell he was a bit insincere because later on he backtracked and said, "Oh, you know, I don't I don't think the jobs were a problem." It was, it was kind of a weird thing. It was like he was I know just a bit a bit um, yeah speaking out both sides of his mouth there a little bit. I think I think if I'm I might I might be misremembering it. But anyway, yeah. So he, so they were mostly saying, "Oh, we're worried about jobs," and then and then Sam Altman said he wasn't worried about jobs because of you know he put, uh, I think he he gave the argument that I that I mentioned earlier about um, we always find other better things for people to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then Gary Marcus, uh, he was he was a sort of here on fire type guy. He, I mean, I appreciate people like this because you know you know what if there is this going to be this. Uh, big threat and that, that we're doomed already kind of thing and he, he's like he's like the guy back here sort of saying well even though we're doomed already let's just let's just you know pretend we can do something about it you know just for the hell, hell of it right or, or not maybe he really thinks we can control super intelligence but i'm i think i think i'm more like roa nora in the chat I, i'm not sure exactly what roa nora was was pointing out but but i i just don't believe there'll be a ai singularity i don't I think people have got the science of it all wrong, and it's all about engineering at the moment. They're, they're pushing behavioral capacities of machines to limits, and you can mimic a human. This is what Alan Turing said was possible, right? You can mimic a human to any arbitrary accuracy you like. You just move atoms around, essentially. <laughs> is how I put it. So anything humans can do, a machine can do better, basically. But it doesn't come with any consciousness or in super intelligence or anything it's all training on past data but anyway suppose you, you were worried about it so what gary marcus mentioned in the thing he 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 says oh he said something and then he said but i don't think mr altman was being honest so he's basically calling him out for sort of lying in front of congress which is i, I think a pretty serious thing I, I think he was right he says he says i think Mr. Altman was not being honest because he didn't really say what his what the threat that he really believes it is. And 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 then they asked Altman, Sam Altman, uh, he's he's one of the developers of Chat GPT. He they asked him what he thought the real threat was. And all he said was, oh, I think I think um, advanced AI or AGI could be a real danger. So 
what I wanted to ask you, Douglas, I think you've heard interviews with Sam Altman before. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And so was he being a bit shady there? I thought. Cause, of what the real thing of what he, the real danger is. Is he not maybe worried about a super intelligence singularity? I think he thinks there is a risk there. Yeah. He, he thinks there is. So he, he actually covered he, he suppressed that. He didn't actually open openly admit that that was his real concern. But uh yeah. In which I think he I mean the other thing too, I guess, to kinda because maybe he's trying to say, like, look, we're just trying to build a large language model. We're not actually trying to tempt AGI, maybe. right? So maybe that yeah. could be his out, right? You know, that's that's not his area. But I think they think they're trying to actually create AGI, right? I mean, I think that's what their attempt is to do. I think I think some of the engineers are mm. the ones that are, think they're more like scientists, right? But they're yeah. not really being scientists. If you're a scientist, you have a hypothesis. You say, uh, this, this, this system is conscious. Mm-hmm. And then you try and show it's not conscious. Yeah, your hypothesis, you, you have a statement like this system is conscious. Yep. And then you get, if you're going to be a scientist, you've got to try and disprove this. You've got to try and just rip that hypothesis to shreds. That's the way you do science. And you never prove, uh, you, you can never prove that it is conscious, right? You're just trying to knock down a hypothesis. It's yeah. What you call Popperian uh, falsificationism. And the thing with consciousness, you can never prove a thing is conscious. It's not something that's available to science. It's just out beyond all okay, science. Okay, I, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you that. Is, is consciousness on it? Is, is consciousness is consciousness a emergent property of? Who knows? No one knows. Okay, it could be a priori to a priori to the universe, or it could okay. be sort of mystical mystical emergent like okay. pan psychist models. But no one knows, and no one will ever know. Because it's not a scientific question. So if you're going to do science, I think the AI scientists want to define consciousness, but they have no idea how to, because it's a subjective first person thing. You, science Correct. deals yep. with yep. objectivity. You need behavior. So it's all about behavior in science. Uh, and, and my point is that you can arbitrarily accurately sim, you know, simulate or mimic the behavior of any, any person. You can, you can just push the technology to that, to that bleeding edge and, and and whatever dangers you can dream up for that is is maybe maybe you know a bit of an existential danger and then you could say you could be all sort of zen and buddhist about it and say well well if humans develop a super intelligent that uh, decides it wipes wipes us all out because we're, we're no good um then you know it's just the universe telling us that humans were never fit to uh, live long <laughs> which which would be a true statement if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Just be a totally um, um, yeah. I don't know. The, the, the fears of that are overblown, and, and you've got to look at the at the more um, proximate problems with democratizing it. Oh. And so you don't get some fascist in power who um just decides to take a beta release of some ai and just um start sort of being a fash <laughs> that's my that's my concern I, I guarantee there was a live stream of the dinosaurs uh, uh, a couple hundred millions of years ago talking about how a, a major meteorite hitting Earth, uh, an asteroid hitting Earth, is <laughs> never going to happen. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, uh, I, I, the whole thing is this bench threat stuff is uh, at edge sort of area but um i listened yeah. i listened to a good I, i'm halfway through a pretty good life uh, uh podcast about consciousness and stuff and, and so i had some good questions that, that I, we might have to just wait until next week to, to go down this line okay but, uh, yeah um, yeah i gotta go soon probably yeah, so, anyway. so, so do i uh, got my daughter's graduation yeah. today so i so gotta, th- I gotta grab some lunch quick and then head off this will be my final. But, no, I'm not even. I'll, I'll wait till next week i'll wait till next week wait till next week. sounds good man i'll, I'll wait till Make next week of- and um because I, I, I yeah deserves more time but uh we had a very productive live stream this week uh oh one other thing yeah we had a little cosmic alignment in the mmt spheres did we um for anyone who's still still on the chat today um so back to mmt we're actually at Um, our highest viewership right now so (laughs) yeah yeah, they're all still here they love it yeah i think about learning theory of mind is can be syntactically produced by chat gpt but syntactics isn't semantics. So just because you can syntactically produce a script showing showing some sort of theory of mind, which would not be a theory because there is no theory of mind, right? There's theories of intelligence because intelligence is behavior. But there's no theory at all of subjectivity, first person, because there's no data 
for can it, I, can I, the data that you can, that can you I, collect your, yourself. Can, can a machine have a subjective experience? That's what no one knows. No one will ever know. It's like okay. asking, okay. what is it like? Yeah. What is Perfect. it like to be a bat? Perfect. No one will ever know. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So yep. anyway, the MMT spheres are in alignment. Remember last week on the live stream, I mentioned, I, I actually want to see the hard debt ceiling. <laughs> That's the most anti-progressive thing you've ever seen, said, by the way, that yeah, yeah, I, what, what I is want, it like to I be, no one can know what it's like to be a bat. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no it's, it's like, uh, uh, sorry, I missed that. I missed that comment. What did you say? I said this is the most anti-progressive thing you've ever said that no one oh, can yeah, under, yeah, totally. uh, no, Oh, I can be very conservative. If you yeah, there was a very conservative topic. thing to say. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's, it, it is. It, it's totally true. Damn because, it! If I want to be a bat, <laughs> it's totally true. You'd have to have a, like a VR experience of it, but it would still be a human. It's you'd be know, knowing what it is like to be a human in a VR world being a bat. Being a bat. So you can't escape. You can't escape this. I don't. I don't like. You, I don't like you telling me that uh, my science thought experience will escape that. Right. <laughs> you have to wait for your soul to be reincarnated in mm. the next mm. Enrose universe as a bat, and then you'll know what it's like to be Ooh, a bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I won't know what it's like. <laughs> Only Bat Doug. <laughs> bat Doug will know. <laughs> oh, maybe Bat uh, Doug will become a man. <laughs> become Bat yeah, Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I, I completely derailed you from the final comment you were going to make before yeah, we uh, right. close up tonight's show. So I just want uh, to point out. I just want to point out that you know sometimes I come up with good ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes. So so it turns out that a few days later, the, the Normanator is is on his little thing saying the same thing. He's like, yeah, I kind of kind of would like to see a hard debt ceiling. Just teach oh yeah, 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 my I'm not show, us, that, that, show us your anime pfp i don't know uh, keep going keep going yeah no that's cool i like it what does pfp stand <laughs> for i just googled it oh profile picture what is my anime profile picture for my alt account no i i, I, I don't what i did pull up though if you are a chess player and and derek it sounds like uh, you might be in this group and then bijou we'll, we'll call it we'll call it here um this this is, was my gamer name back in the i mean i've had this gamer name for 20 years uh, and it's still my name on chess.com virtuous with a t uh here, here are my i've played 17,000 games of chess and on the two the two that i play the most are blitz um 1300 on blitz 1600 on daily so uh, i never took time to learn opening play uh, I only ever took time to to really understand mid game and end game. So if you have some good opening traps, you'll probably beat me. Um, but if I can get you in the middle and end game, I feel like I got a, a good uh, a good shot. But uh, if, if you're interested, chess.com. My name is Virtuous. Join or uh, add me as a friend, and I'd, I'd be glad to play uh, play some games. If uh, if you're into anyway, that's all I have for tonight. Cool, man. And. Uh, yeah, another. This is a great stream. This is a really good stream. I enjoyed it, and we covered uh, covered quite a lot of ground. Bijou, uh, do you have a send out for tonight, or oh, yeah. do, or does you AI? Can up, does, you can put up my screen there if you want. Or does AI have one? Did AI create your screen? This looks AI generated. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. No, I just. I just whipped that up. I watched him. I watched. I watched him draw it. So come on, you're now attributing everything I do to AI. Yeah. I may. I may as well retire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Almost All right. there. Just a few more documents to train on. Send us. Okay, uh, so send us over the go. finish line. Tink, 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 tink. What's that sound, Douglas? It's the platinum coin. When will we hear it? The Keltonatus. The calculated drop box at the Fed seems at, at the Fed seems to be jammed. So what are we going to do with the Nathan Tankerfus misfiring his ammunition rounds at the Wall Street geeks, misattributing MMT to not Mosler, and then you've got the Moslertron. It's on vacation in the UK, tutoring the Murphy on the new. He's the new Crown Tax King, by the way. But in the serious danger of the Mosletron being sucked down, the black hole of information lost at the Tax Justice Building Basement Research Lab. So, viewers, bat MMT fans, how long will it take for the Mosletron to get back? He keeps promising, just give us more time. The legs will kick in. 
Or will the Treasury keep insisting on paying for spending twice? <laughs> What's the, heaven help us, Douglas. Or will the Norman Normatron Bijou catastrophe happen, causing a debt ceiling paradigm change, causing the hawking radiation from the tax pay for black hole to reassemble back into unentangled dollar accounts? frying all the neoclassicals in the process as they pass through the AMPS firewall paradox of virtual currency, anti-currency virtual pairs. For all this, <laughs> next week, find out. Same MMT time, same MMT channel. That was awesome. Have a Bye. great rest of your week, everyone. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for being here. We'll see you then. Have a good night, everybody.